What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoke Tire Podcast. This uh, this episode is brought to you by the Brio Beardscape. I love this joint. Been using it. Just got the first charge done. So we can actually mark it. I used it for a year and five months uh, on one charge. There you go. It's ridiculous. Everyone has a bad experience with a a buzzer. I, uh, now at my 37th year, have figured out the, the, the perfect buzzer system. It's the Brio Beardscape. It is a uh, low maintenance. It's got these ceramic blades that don't get too crusty. They're easy to clean. You don't have to lubricate them that often. This thing is light. It's strong. It comes in a really nice travel pouch with interchangeable blades and a nice brush to clean it out. Perfect for trimming your face, your head, or you know where else. Um, it is a, it is a, a horsepower machine. Machine, and also energy efficient, going a year and a half almost on one charge for me with once a week use. Um, get yourself a Brio Beardscape. I got the guess. I got the best price for you, my friend. Best price. Brio for life. Brio the number four life.com slash not slash. Use code smoking. Brio4life.com. Use code smoking at checkout. This will be the last buzzer you ever buy. It is, uh, it's awesome. I use mine every single week without shame. Um, We've got the Migliore luxury car care products on this one. Migliore is known for making the best of the best when it comes to car care. Their product line is handmade and poured right here in Connecticut in the USA. I think most of Connecticut's in the USA. Bridgeport might be a little different, but most of Connecticut is in the USA. Migliore's Strata Coating is a ceramic coating treatment you can easily apply yourself. It has a ton of gloss, lasts over a year, and keeps your car looking great for longer in between washes. It's extremely hydrophobic, so water just sheets right off. So if you're if you're mud bogging, you're still going to have to wash your car. But if it just gets like a dust on it, like happens in California or, you know, cars that you keep in the garage that maybe you don't dry very much that accumulate dust and you don't want to take it to the car wash again or spend the whole afternoon on it. You just give it a a once over and uh, it makes the maintenance so much easier. Strata Coating has over a hundred positive reviews on Amazon so check them out. Spring is here. Use code TST at checkout at migliorewax.com. That's M-I-G-L-I-O-R-E wax.com. 10% off anything in their store with code TST. There it is, folks. Uh, in our store right now, our Blipshift merch store, our partnership with Blipshift, they make the best car t-shirts on the internet. We have a new design in the store. Uh, two weeks only. It's the new smoking tire, a vintage Formula One style t-shirt. This is a really cool shirt. It looks like one of those old school F1 posters. It's got a Ferrari on it. It's got uh, the Angeles Crest Highway. It's very, very pretty. I really like mine. It's got kind of a texture to that printing. It's not sunk into the material. I am a fan. It's, uh, It's only on sale for the first two weeks of April. Get them while they're hot by going to thesmokingtire.com and clicking on uh, store or go to blipshift.com slash TST. You can either go to the smokingtire.com and click store or blipshift.com slash TST and uh, get them for the first two weeks of April only uh, in our store. Okay, on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast, uh, we've got a man whose uh, bio is so long, he is either a thousand years old and has the best skincare I've ever seen, or he has 14 jobs at once, uh, writing about anything and everything uh, since since he was a young man. Uh, he's written for Vanity Fair, he's written for every uh, major car magazine, uh, most newspapers, um, I've seen him at press launches. He's been in the, the Huffington Post and Jalopnik, the LA Times, Men's Fitness, Men's Health, Men's Journal, pretty much any magazine that starts with men's. I mean, it's it's uh, it's crazy. He's also had a full career as a teacher, and um, he, he just seems to be everywhere all the time. Uh, Brett Burke is in studio on the Smoking Tire Podcast. <laughs> What's happening? Smoking Tire Podcast. We're here. It's live. 
And it's a full house. Zach Clavin in the time. building. Hello. Hello. And Mr. Brett Burke. Hi. For his first ever time speaking into a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, journalist, writer, and I, I read, if your bio on your website is accurate, by the way, I don't usually read people's bios, but I read yours because I was like, what the fuck does this guy do anyway? <laughs> but you were, you had like a whole other career before yes, doing this. I had a quite extensive and very different career prior to. Are you just like ageless? Yeah. How are you, are you actually I'm, like 70? I'm a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I drink the life force of the young. Do you have a blood boy? Well, <laughs> <laughs> my trainer told me about Blood Boys in Beverly Hills that it's going on right now. That he has another client that has a Blood Boy. It's a Not real all thing. Blood Boy, but goes to a place that utilizes Blood Boys, like uh, wow. like Keith, a third Keith party Richard blood, style. Blood boy. Yeah, inject, injecting the blood of the young. <laughs> yeah, to try to stay young. You're doing that shit, right? I mean, if I were, I wouldn't say. <laughs> right, <laughs> the wrong way to stay employed. We're yeah. all going to be doing it, man. Gig economy. Mm -hmm. I don't Buy really, and sell him. I don't really want to <laughs> live that long. You know, you know me. <laughs> yeah. My grandma lived to 101. Yeah. And I wonder about that sometimes. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that when I hit 75, it's heroin time. Right. <laughs> like, um, why wait? <laughs> were her last words? Okay, 38. <laughs> She's like, Matthew, trust me, call it at 80. Yeah. No, we have, a, we have a plan. We have like a life plan. So it's like at 72 with a... Uh, reprieve, reprieve for like maybe 78 if things are going really well at 72 mm -hmm. um, we get a helicopter and line it with fur and crash it into a mountain seriously yeah really like a full <laughs> Thelma and Louise yeah yeah full, well so the but there's you have to, if you back this plan up a few years <laughs> Uh, do, who's taking helicopter flying lessons right now? I know. Or exactly. is there is there literally an you unwitting pilot involved? In this I mean, flight? well, if you're only flying <laughs> once, yeah. do you need to take lessons? No, yeah, and the goal it's is true. to crash and die. Right. So I mean, how? That's a good point. Yeah. You can get. But you're gonna have to like you, get a helicopter and yeah. You but know, I mean, fly, you have to take it it's off. It's a lot cheaper than getting a retirement home. I mean, logistically, <laughs> logistically <laughs> though, your plan works a lot better in an airplane. Have you ever taken a flying lesson in an airplane? No. It, I don't like adventure, to be perfectly honest. My girl got me a flying lesson for my birthday. It yeah. works exactly like you think it does. <laughs> you could steal a plane today. If you you might not you might have some trouble landing it, but if your yeah. goal was to take off and fly, you could get in that motherfucker and do it. You just like pull back or, yes. or something like that. Throttle forward, okay. pull fucking back, and, and then you're flying. Up. Right. Yes, that's exactly. Yeah, like it, landing is where all the instruction goes. That's like that's <laughs> what Ryan and radio said. chatter. It's yeah, all it's all about not crashing into shit while you're Alpha out there. Numeric, but everything. if you're if you're not trying to land, not so hard. Yeah, How's yeah. the guy in Seattle? All right. Well, there's well, there's a to morbid about. Uh, yeah. start to the show. No, but I Hi. think helicopter <laughs> seems just more lethal somehow, right? Totally. They're, they're, they're like the most yeah, the most dangerous because it could happen anyway. Yeah. No. Right? Like the only thing more dangerous than a helicopter per mile traveled is a rescue helicopter. So it's a helicopter in a hurry. <laughs> it's actually true. Is that actually, actually true? true? Have yeah. you researched that? I mean, someone could look it up. <laughs> in theory. What else? What is the most dangerous way to get anywhere? Is, is it, it's got to be helicopter, yeah, right? I think so, it's helicopter. There's a lot of private crashes, right? It's just. Yeah. A private jet is probably higher than anyone really wants to admit, especially yeah. if you're flying to Aspen. I think private planes, everybody ever crashes. Private plane crap, like Cessna, jet, whatever. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of, look, how many people land on, land, quote, on the 405 on the every 405. year? Yeah. More than one. Yeah, Harrison Ford More than is two. Zero. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh, he's By done himself. that twice? Uh, one golf course, mm -hmm. okay, and then one uh, taxi. You <laughs> landed on a taxiway, oh, <laughs> which you're not really supposed to do. <laughs> I didn't mean it's at an airport. It was close. Like, when true. you're Harrison Ford, we have learned the law just doesn't really apply. He's okay. still flying. He's, He's still, still he flies all the time. Yeah. Do you, do you get like points on your pilot's <laughs> your license? Pilot's That's right. a great You'd question. Think. Yeah. These are here's let's, let's do you have a whiteboard? Let's uh You'd let's think. let's start a list. A I've heard question. of someone <laughs> being grounded before. There was a pilot who back in the day before before there were drones like 2009. I did a couple of shoots for Playboy. Okay. Which were very silly. <laughs> I mean, they were as yeah. cheese balls you think. One of them involved a helicopter. Okay. And this pilot was kind of nuts. And he did it. He was doing an, he, I guess he got a reputation of, of big gray area type of things. And he did another video for, I think it was like Hustler or something, where he literally got blown while flying. And that was the whole video. Right. And B he got grounded. BWF. He, he got right. grounded yeah. for that. <laughs> wow. That's why you don't show your face, buddy. Yeah, it was gnarly. It was yeah. very gnarly. Anyway. 
<laughs> you know what's funny? Well, there was a video on Instagram where this guy parked his helicopter. He flew up to the hangar, turned around, hovering, and then flew backwards into the hangar. I mean, the clearance, yeah. top and bottom, was like a few feet. It was yeah. amazing and precise. Wow. That seems much more dangerous, though, than getting a blowjob while flying just in the air. Yeah, did that more guy lose his less license? Distracting. No, right. everyone clapped and retweeted it. Everyone was like, <laughs> great job, Steve, you're amazing. Well, I mean, if clapping and retweeting existed back when this story was going True. on, probably the same thing would have happened. That's a good point. point. It doesn't yeah, make yeah. it it doesn't mean that it's good or public opinion Fair would have kept that guy flying for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Save blowjob pilot. You know? <laughs> There'd have been hashtags everywhere. Mm-hmm. So what's happening, yeah. man? Welcome to the West Side. Thank you. You're a New Yorker. Yes. I'm a New Yorker. Yes. So double West Side for me here because the West I, of the West. Yeah, the West of the West. I stay when I'm in Los Angeles in the wintertime on the East Side in Do you Echo Park? Uh huh. Mm. Uh huh. This is like your winter White House. Yeah, it's kind of kind of like, like, like that. Yeah. It's your that's, how, that's how I like to. Think Think about it. Yeah. It's a rental house, but yeah, nice. Uh, but it's the same one. Yeah, and so wait. So you have figured out how to be an automotive journalist in New York, which is you have a winter home somewhere right. where you can still drive sports cars because you yeah. rolled up in a Bentley GT. Yeah, like yeah. a boss. Yeah, people are like, why do you come out to LA in the winter time? Oh, it's the like, best time to be. First in LA. of all, have you spent a winter in New York? It's yeah. not the greatest, you know. I mean, it's fun for a little while, but then it gets a little tedious. And also, yeah, for as a car writer, uh, yeah, all the, the stuff that's that's not in the fleet there is available here. And yeah. there's also lots of other stuff to do. And we have better light for taking pictures in the winter. We right. have better skies. The tourists aren't really around. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with your your uh, ingenuity here. Thank you. Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely yeah. done. So this has been like a annual tradition since like. 2006, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're been, really committed to this. Yeah. I new, mean, it's new a new house it's every a, time, it's or do you pretty, rent the same house? Well, uh, no, it was like different places for the first few years, and then a long time in Silver Lake in like two different places, like for like eight or nine years, and then the past three or four years, the same place. Wait, you don't fuck with the beach? What's wrong with the, what's wrong with the west side? You're not, not about the beach? I'm not really a, a beach person what? that much. Really? I mean, it's nice for like on occasion, but. It's just I don't want to be around the beach all the time. Sure, I guess the, a lot of the beach benefits happen in the summer because right. on the beach it's just fifteen degrees cooler all yeah. the time, yeah. and in the winter that doesn't really matter. No, yeah. that's it's True. not it's not as good. So yeah, yeah, we're right for the winter White House. This is not a requirement. Yeah, so we're right on point. right on Elysian <laughs> Park. You know, right yeah. where uh, Dodger oh. Stadium is. Yeah, that's well. Now I now get you your hashtag. Right. <laughs> Question yeah. number one is right. like, what the fuck does your hashtag mean? Right. And so, now yeah. I get so it. So I do this dumb thing when I come out to L.A. for the past however many years, finding just like street parked, interesting street parked cars around my neighborhood. And because I live on Elysian Park, is the your hashtag Instagram just is Brett Burke? Oh, Elysian, Elysian. Uh, what? Is your Instagram just Brett Burke? No, it's Instagram? the real Brett Burke. The real Brett Burke. Tim, can you pull it up? B-E-R-K. Yeah. Yeah. It's in my follows. There he is. Yeah, yeah. His Instagram is good. I like your Instagram. You're a, yeah. you're a fabulous man. So there's oh there's today's Elysian Park. It's like a '80s Honda. Yeah, <laughs> I now like, I yeah. understand what it means. I'm like yeah. looking up what Elysian. I'm like, what right. does this mean? And it's like, oh, it's really just the park. Right. Yeah. That, and the right. car. Cars are the in the park. Yeah, <laughs> it's been going on for a while. Right. <laughs> and I'm <Maybe> stupid. <laughs> um, this is a park in my city. Like, right. I live here. I mean, it is. There's a car from here. Yeah. It's, yeah. Far. it's one of the bigger ones. And Dodger Stadium's there. That's kind of like people know that. Yeah. Some people, but if they watch baseball, they do. right. Yeah. I had to go to a baseball game. I not. Had to. I elected exactly. to go to a nope, baseball game. No, you said game. it perfectly. Yeah. yeah, I know. I've I've had to go to <laughs> yeah, baseball games on, before. On Thursday, uh, the good thing is that we could walk there from our house. So that's oh, like that's a real bonus. That's really nice. So then yeah. once you're there and the edibles kick in, then you can just be like, I don't need to stay here forever. Like I don't. I can leave at any time. Like three I'm not innings trapped. of baseball yeah. is good. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we made it to like <laughs> we made it to like seven. And there were supposed to be fireworks. It's like on Fridays they do fireworks mm -hmm. in the stadium, and so that was kind of exciting. So we were like, let's go home, because our deck overlooks the park in the stadium. So we're like, we'll just go home, where there's cocktails that don't cost $41 yeah. each and aren't weak, and then we'll watch the fireworks from there. But it, as it turned out, the game went into like 21 innings or something <laughs> like that. Like It was, it did not end until 1.30 oh, in the morning. No. And if it's after 11, they cancel the fireworks because oh, of some sort of noise ordinance. So you basically learned that you could have just stayed home and had the experience you wanted That's to experience. pretty much how right. I feel about most uh, events like that, you know, <laughs> like a concert or a car race or a sport event. My, like uh, my fiance's stuff. family has a saying, and I had it embroidered on a pillow for her birthday, which is, fun is best when it's over. <laughs> 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 and I had it embroidered on a pillow in Latin. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> beautiful. I like that. It almost, and it looks profound. Yeah. It is, it is profound. Yeah. Yeah. It is. 
Um, but man, I bet you, I always, every time I have to go to Dodger Stadium, um, oh, yeah, concert, right. oh. Billy Joel, Dodger Stadium. Oh. Awesome. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Same experience, edibles, right. walk, you know, the best. <laughs> but I feel like if you're walking by Dodger Stadium, you can enjoy other people's traffic misery. Yes. That's really going to be a highlight. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a bonus almost, in, you know, in my All life in general. Yeah, I don't, I don't really drive that many places, you know. I work from home. Do you uh, only destination drive pretty much? Um, I mean, what else, what else would I... Do what you own any I cars? Get? Oh yeah, you I do. do. Okay, I own five cars. You do? Yeah. Where do you keep them all? In New York well, City? No. So I have a house in, in upstate New York. Oh cool. And so a couple of them are up there. That's I, I have a. What's 19, in the Burke fleet? 1990 Range Rover is up there. Ooh, does it work properly? Yeah, yeah. All it's right. it's sorted. It's been sorted. I have an excellent mechanic. Jared Lamana at Churchill Classics. He has a wonderful right. collection of diamond jewelry now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. His kids all go to Yale. Right. <laughs> He's got a big house on upstate New York. Yeah. So he, he figured it all out. Um, so that's up there. I have a 79 Fiat Spider. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I remember I've that car. Yeah, those, yeah. Are both, those are both great. And I, the, I then have a, just a, a new Volkswagen uh, Alltrack boo. wagon. Yeah, boo. Manual. Yeah. Right. <laughs> cool. No, actually, uh, that was my crushed by a tree. The, right. Yeah. It was. Yeah, but then a I tree fell on it. it. Yeah, like oh, a giant God. tree in a, a huge storm, like Bummer. crushed that and like most of my house. But really, it's, it's fixed Whoa. now. Is everybody okay? Everyone was okay. Yeah. I was I was in uh, in Napa driving the seven eighteen. <laughs> 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 my boyfriend sadly was at home and endured the trauma. Quite an oh, alarm no. clock. Yeah. How yeah. far from where he was in the house did the tree actually um, fall? Like as far as Zach is. Fuck out of here. Shit. It felt really. Yeah. Like it. Like <sighs> see, he was in the living room. The porch is like you know off of the living room yeah. front porch, and a, one of the trees fell and just like sheared the whole porch off. Crazy, and crushed, wow. crushed the car. That must wow. Yeah. That'd be a sound. That's a big in the tree. Side. Holy yeah. crap! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a hundred year, old, like seven or eight hundred year old, like hundred foot tall pine trees. Did like, you go out there out of anger and your fucking firewood? <laughs> the no, we, we we left town. We went somewhere. We went on like a vacation or something. We we're like, we got to get the fuck out of here. It's a disaster area. And uh, nature's some, revenge for Dieselgate. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's gasoline. Uh, some guy from a service called like Chop and Drop came <laughs> and, and, and yeah. took. Like by the time we got home, everything was gone. He was Perfect. like this really scrawny, like methy guy. And apparently, there's some video of him driving the all track around, like the crushed all track. Really? Like somehow they got it started and drove it around, but I've never seen the video. That's so cool. awesome. Good for it him. Seems like an urban I bet he's legend. got a sick YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> front half, the front half of the car only. Yeah, yeah, those exactly. Kinds of like Yo, follow, that guy yeah. On, follow that guy on Instagram immediately. All right. The other two cars are in Michigan. I own the, the Fiat uh, and the other two cars I own with my younger brother. Oh, cool. And he's in Detroit. And so uh, it's a 72 Saab uh, like a 96 wagon. Oh my God. <laughs> um, and who works on that? Ninety-five wagon. Now I'm getting it wrong. I think it's um, a ninety-six, right? Yeah. Ninety-five is the wagon. Ninety-six is the sedan. All right, someone's going to correct me. I can't remember what car right. I own. Tim That's will, smart, right? Tim will find it. It's a really old Saab. Yeah, Look at that. It. That's it. That's ninety-five. <laughs> Oh my God! Is that what? yours? No, that that's one's not, not yours. mine. Mine's not nearly that. Well, that nice. one is but like really fresh. fresh. Yeah, yeah. It's a you know, it's a two door, seven passenger uh, <laughs> Swedish wagon with a V four. That's, that's one of the fantastic. strangest looking cars, but it's it's, it's incredible looking. It looks like yeah. something yeah. would be out of like. It looks great. I know. You would think it was like. Sort can we, of can we see the front, Tim? Oh yeah. yeah, there it is. Yeah. Wow, it has a very Alfa Romeo like front, doesn't yeah. it? I feel like I it mean, has two different fenders on it that are attached together. You know, <laughs> oh, it right, o- yeah. it's got over fenders. It yes. predicted over fenders by like sixty years. Dude. <laughs> totally. Did. I think all the fenders pop off with like clips or something of like that. They do. It's pretty easy. My brother's a big sub fanatic. Um, and then we have a 1978 uh, Porsche 928. Oh, there you go. So one one Good, car well, that people well, are like, well, oh, okay, okay. right. I like I like all your entire fleet. Thank you, man. I think you're. I respect all those oddball weird cars. All right, good. That's yeah. good. I'm about that. It would if be I, better if I knew anything about cars or something like that. But uh, well, you know, you don't need to. You drive them. You yeah. like how they look. You exactly. you know who to call when they break. Exactly. That's all I Jared know. Jared Lamana at Churchill Classics. <laughs> right. Does he do all of them? Does he cover. No, all he does. Of them? He just does the the Fiat and the and the Range Rover. Oh man, he, yeah, he's a glutton for punishment. Yeah. Yep. I the Fiat was actually my best, like my best running car for a period of time. Yeah, like I never had, a good statement. The Range Rover <laughs> wasn't working well. This is before Jared fixed it, and then I had a I had a, a 2004 uh, BMW, you know, three series yeah. uh, Sport Pack, like 325 Sport Pack, um, and uh, that was just like re- reaching that point that those cars do when like everything just started to 
break, you know, yeah. like 120,000 miles, which is like sh- all sh- the plastic sh- yeah, parts just, like just disintegrate. Cascade of, of Zach's, like, Zach's about there. He's getting there. Yeah. yeah. Zach's getting there quick. Oh, yeah. He's got M2M3. M3. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There you Makes go. sounds. He's just yeah. about there. <laughs> so, but the Fiat was running great. <laughs> so I'd be like, I guess I have to drive the Fiat today. Mm-hmm. And I, the old Italian stuff, if you drive it a lot, it works yeah. good. Yeah. It's you, very do you remember, nice. uh, Jason, can you ever tell you, like, he got in one of his cars to go somewhere one day and it was broken and then he got in another one and it was, he switched cars three times within 10 minutes <laughs> and like all of them were broken and he was like, fuck. And he had to like go down the street and rent a car yeah. and then go to wherever <laughs> he was trying to go to. Cars. Yeah, all yeah. broken cars. That's, I had that's all my when he cars got broken at the same time. Like a month ago, all my cars were broken at once. Like undrivably broken? Not, uh, not totally undrivably broken, but broken to a point where I didn't want to drive them. Yeah. At one point, they were all in the shop. Like, my garage was empty. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, they were broken and gone and away. That's a big day. <laughs> yeah, they were, I took a fucking Uber. I was like, fuck! This is bullshit. <laughs> After the tree fell on the car and we were going to get an insurance payout, I did a story for GQ that was like, I should not be trusted to buy a practical car. Like, it's my boyfriend's car, pretty much. He drives the Alltrack. Because uh, I have a press car every week and I have all these other stupid cars that I should yeah. be driving. And so I did this story like, trying to convince him, like, here's a good car, you know? Um, So the the specifications where we wanted something that was a wagon, all-wheel drive, and a manual transmission. So I was like, this C3 Corvette is sort of like... (laughs) I was like, if we get the 82, it's got a hatchback. It's a Jensen Interceptor. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it was things like that. Eventually, he, he, he had all the best lines in the story. He was just like... That's not going to work. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm try- I keep trying to get my girl to drive a classic, and it's just not. I taught her yeah. to drive stick. She was yeah. great at it, yeah. and then she absolutely refused to. I was like, "You could literally drive my Lamborghini," and she's like, "I yeah. don't give a fuck. I don't want to drive that." Yeah, I was like, "Damn it!" No, I know my boyfriend doesn't really care about cars, and old cars are a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yep, they really. <laughs> I I did a story. Uh, who is it for? I can't remember. It may have been for Bloomberg or something like that. Uh, this past winter, where I tried out all these. Um, Vintage car rental apps. Have you tried? Yeah, yeah. It's like drive share. I did and, the drive share, and, and we've used Turo. Well. What's and Turo, yeah. What's Vinti? Vinti. They mostly do picture cars, like for movies oh. and advertising or whatever. But they're they're out here. They're mostly uh, L.A. and San Francisco. Oh, maybe I should get down on that one. Yeah, they're a little smaller, but yeah, drive share and and. Can uh, you post Turo. cars for static rental on that one? Yes. Too? Ooh, see, that's where I'm gonna get my Lambo money. Right. Except, True. yeah. Then Except, you just you have to be there with it sometimes. You know, for, enough, does. for the for the right amount of money that yeah. that. Car, yeah. I the 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 going rate on that car is really high. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Because there's like four people in LA who have them. Yeah, we all know each other. Right. So, so you're like set the price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's insider trading. It's a, it's, a, it's a Kuntaj union. Right. <laughs> you I mean, want yeah, that's right. That's not. It's not insider trading. Yeah. The SEC doesn't give a shit about this. <laughs> right. They're not listening to this. No. Are they? <laughs> yeah. So um, so you like are kind of in the traditional school of like freelance like your fucking bio has like 50 outlets on it you right. for. it's a lot <laughs> yeah so uh, how does a, a career school teacher become like a seriously frequently working freelance journalist how does that happen uh all right let me try to tell this story in the shortest possible way you don't have to we got time oh that's there's true no, there's right. no rush <laughs> this is a long format well. show Uh, Here we go. (laughs) I was born in 1969. Right, it's a good year. Yeah, thank you. Uh, No, so I was a I was a I was a preschool teacher, uh, classroom teacher for like 11 years. Uh, The end of my career, I ran a school of my own in the East Village in Manhattan. Really? Uh, Yeah, Uh, I had my own school. If you can believe that they entrusted 50 people entrusted their children to me and the <laughs> derelicts that I hired um, to work there. Anyway, this was in were my- they all, Were they all alive at the end of your tenure? Yeah, I never lost one. Success. Yeah, I never <laughs> lost one, <laughs> which I feel like is an achievement. It is, definitely. Yeah. And I never injured one. Well, how many became strippers? Because that's, <laughs> that's another. I do run into some of them on occasion. Not, the, I mean, not in a strip club, but oh, okay, <laughs> it's a good, really left. You should have. Yeah. Right. You needed another sentence between those. Two. <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. These kids are like in their twenties now. You know, some yeah. of them are even older than that. Anyway, uh, so this was in my like late twenties and early thirties. Uh, my friends started to have kids at that time and here you know I was like actually trained like I have a master's degree in early childhood development like I have like you know a lot of experience working with you know, hundreds of okay. hundreds of young kids yeah. and so my friends started to have kids and 
I looked at how they were parenting and I was like, you people are fucking crazy. <laughs> like, you have no clue what you're doing whatsoever. Like, you have no idea. Like, you're just doing it completely wrong. So I used to joke at the school when the parents would come in for like an open house day or whatever, they and they'd be like, well, what's your educational pedagogy? I would say, drunk gay uncle. <laughs> You know, it's like someone who like cares about you, you know, yeah. and like wants to wants you to have a good time, wants you to develop, but isn't going to take it all too seriously. How do they take and that? They actually really liked it. Okay. I mean, this was in the East Village in the '90s. You know, people yeah. were kind of down with that. Still <laughs> kind of rolling the dice, but I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, and like, you know, I didn't actually drink at right. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not well, then. One can only know. hope. Right. Yeah, later. Let but <laughs> so my my friends had kids, uh, and I used to say like. Uh, I'm going to write a parenting book. Like, you people need help. I'm going to write a parenting book because you don't know what you're doing. And eventually, I decided I actually was going to do that. So I did it. Uh, I wrote a parenting book called The Gay Uncle's Guide to Parenting, which was an awesome expert, expert outsider's perspective on raising kids. And so it's um, pretty much every chapter is a story of one of my friends or family members fucking up and then my sort of snarky commentary combined with uh, some very actionable uh, information about, you know, child development, how to talk to kids, how to deal with food, sleep, you know, toilet training, new siblings, death, you know, all, all the basic stuff that kids have to deal with. And so that book got published uh, in 2008, Random House, a division of Random House Crown put it out, and uh, my agent gave me the advice that I should start writing for publications about parenting and child development to try to raise the profile of myself and the book. So I started doing that and publishing articles. Did your uh, did your agent contact outlets or did you did you no, take up I mean, the torch? And yeah, go I on. took up the torch. He's like, call anyone you know, anywhere, you know. And I was a, I was always a writer. Like I uh, was a you know as an undergraduate studied creative writing. I was a fiction writer, published a bunch of short stories and things like that. So I had this in my background. Uh, so I just started contacting everyone I knew in the magazine world and and found you know a bunch of very different publications right that i started writing articles about parenting and child development for to and promote the book I to, yeah to promote primary, the book and yeah. like you know i got paid yeah. also right like yeah. it was like a paid gig nice and uh i had another job which i'll get to uh that i was doing also during that time period so I told you the resume was fucking stacked <laughs> yeah <laughs> so then uh a guy i met at a party was an editor at vanity fair and took over vanity fair when their uh, vanityfair.com when they launched their web relaunched or sort of launched their website in like the mid to late 2000s 2007 2008 mm -hmm. and he had seen the book and he liked it and he was like I want you to write some stories for us so I started writing for them like some kids stories or whatever stuff about parents and, and, and kids and then he was like okay we really like your writing what else do you want to write about so this is just for vf.com this is like 2008 um, and I sent him this whole long list of things it's like 19th century landscape painting, <laughs> moss gardening, uh, modern architecture. Oh, like, wow. I can't the edibles remember, you know. were kicking in yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, I you know, you read about. <laughs> right. I've always had this sort of like closet interest in cars. Like I always loved cars when I was a little kid. Uh, you know, I grew up in Detroit. I used to go to the auto show and just, you know, could name every car on the street. Uh, my bar mitzvah cake was in the shape of a Duesenberg. Really? So, yeah, yeah. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Right. How did it, how how uh, how <laughs> was accurate it was it? Was it, a, it was like an S.J. Ralston coupe, you know? <laughs> so, really? I just, I just yeah. love that you wrote a book called like The Gay Uncle's Guide to pa Parenting, and then you're like, I had this closeted interest yeah. in cars. Right. You know, like, I, just, <laughs> I couldn't tell anybody about no. it. Like in, in college, Parents I would like killed me. I would I would hide <laughs> in the public library and read car magazines. Oh I didn't want my, my friends God. to see me. That's so funny. So it was like openly gay closet car lover. Was it, was it because hysterical. cars were not like intellectual enough? A genuine question, like for your yeah. friends. That's the title like, of your autobiography, right, right there. Yeah, right, <laughs> openly gay, openly gay, <laughs> guys, car 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 a great autobiography title. Yeah, I think that was part of it. It was just like you know, you know how people think about cars. If they don't care about cars, they're like they're polluting, they're noisy, yeah. they make a mess, they're they're mm -hmm. ruining the world. I mean, all of these things are true. Um, Those are the nicest things they would think if they didn't like cars, and I think it right. can get worse. Yes, if, you know, exactly. You know. It goes downhill from there. So anyway, I didn't let I didn't let on. Um, so anyway, he was, I, I said, I've always had this cousin in cars and he comes back to me and he's like, would you want to write like a gay car column, like a car column from a gay perspective or something like that? And I was like, I've always, I've heard whatever what, that is. What is the gay car perspective? I mean, it's essentially like I'm gay and I'm writing about cars. <laughs> That's but as like, far as I take it, right? But there's people, you, 
okay. Mm-hmm. I, how does one affect the other? I don't yeah. get it. Because I mean, there is a website called gaywheels.com. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't read it, but I had a friend who wrote for them. Like, yeah. what is the focus exactly? I mean, I just think it's like, yeah, what, you know, the way you would niche focus anything. Like, you I know, guess. if you were writing about, yeah. Does, does the analysis of cars change at all, or is it really just like a branding thing where, I mean, you know, I think and, it was, it was a, a branding thing, and thing. I made a lot of dick jokes, like a lot oh. of, like, <laughs> far too many dick jokes oh, and gotcha, anal jokes, different. things like that. You yeah, know, that yeah. was pretty much it. It was just like a lot of really, like, really uh, cheap <laughs> dick jokes. <laughs> Gaywheels.com, humor that understands you. Right. So this, I, my, my column was called- Or if called, you're 18 to seven, you'll also like that <laughs> joke. This is also really funny for you. Yeah, yeah it was called Stick Shift. Um, and the, the logo, the original logo was, uh, was was two rainbow colored Mustangs humping each other. Um, like the um, cover of the Aerosmith album, Pump, but yeah, rainbow? But rainbow, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they wanted it to be VW so Beatles funny. originally, but I was like, it's a little gay, mm. right? <laughs> I was like, Let's yeah. butch it up a little. You could find those probably online somewhere. Those images that it eventually changed to like I think someone's hand holding on to it, like a stick shifter. Maybe it was just the shift itself. I can't remember. I mean, a shifter so with good. two knobs yeah, yeah. is really yeah. what I'm. Thinking. It's pretty good. That's very so funny. anyway, he was like, "Do you want to write this gay car column?" And I was like. Um, yes, yeah, I definitely do. And so that launch, that was sort of my first car writing gig uh, in the industry. I was writing a weekly car column for, for VF. Yeah, Fair. for VF.com. So and that's then, a good gig. It's a great business card. It opens all the doors. Yeah. It's like such a legit outlet. Yeah. people. That's awesome. People were quite excited. People in the industry, like on the PR side or whatever, were relatively interested just because they hadn't really done automotive no. coverage mm-hmm. and it was this sort of new thing. So it did open a lot of doors. I didn't know what to expect but did they um, go like fucking hog wild with the photography so i'm trying to remember how it worked i think i took a lot of shitty pictures on like my phone you know so they didn't send any leave of it no 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 (laughs) (laughs) and we started i started doing stuff for the magazine and then sometimes stuff would get shot but oftentimes they're just using stuff that the manufacturers are providing you know um because it's you know unless there's something super special that they you know they need a car with x person or something like that so that so that sort of you know kick-started my career and it it gave me a lot of great access and we did a lot of like stars and cars stories you know with you're still people. teaching while you're doing this stuff no so the teaching at this point had ended okay yeah cool. so i'm out of the i'm out of the classroom i'm still writing a little bit about parenting and child development and then i'm also doing what was the what's this mystery side gig that yeah you so said the you other side to? gig was was uh was working well, Tim found Tim oh, found some uh, some weird video <laughs> yeah, game called wow. Stick Shift <laughs> that, in the in the Twenty One Jump Street font. That's not that me. Says, yeah. uh, Stick wish. Shift is an autoerotic night driving game about <laughs> pleasuring a gay car. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that says. Wow, the internet is awesome. I'm, I wish I had thought of that. Is that an actual game? Can we pull that? I Can don't we play? Know. <laughs> but make sure you clear the history before we get yeah. out of here tonight. Exactly. <laughs> this wow. is grimy. Is that real? An autoerotic night driving. <laughs> about pleasure, a gay, gay car. car. All right. Do you remember that guy on that like My Strange Addiction show or whatever? Uh, right, that was addicted to car? fucking cars. Yeah, the Auto, fuck is autophilia that about? or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I it's I don't know, but that was one of the weirdest videos yeah, ever. Indeed, ever made. Yeah, that's just a weird. I mean, also you really got to wait for the car to cool down. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's a right time and a yeah, wrong time. Yeah, exactly, right. that's a that's yeah. a Goldilocks situation. Right, exactly, just right. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you've considered the logistics. Well, um, I mean, well, we think yeah. about I mean, these who things. hasn't really, to be honest. Yeah. Um, okay. The other okay, job the was other like weird was job. like doing research and consulting work, and it sort of started out like ed- working for educational organizations and educational television for kids, educational not for profits, and then I discovered that. Um, there was this whole other world of of research uh, that wasn't about um, helping people. That was about like doing like selling packaged goods, like selling oh, more yeah. cereal, you know, and things like that. Well, which is my fiance does. Oh, she really? does research for yeah for consumer packaged goods. Oh wow! And she she works at Facebook right now. Okay, I know it's awful. I hate it, but yeah. um, uh, but she's she may end up going back there. But she did toys for oh, years. But yeah. she like she did she did food before that. What's her name? Hannah Stein. Hmm. And uh, before that, she was like, uh, she she researched like Pam, mm-hmm. and she said people would come into her office and cry because they were so passionate yeah. 
to tell somebody how much they love fucking Pam. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it was this real is like crazy. The strangest. Stuff. Yeah, insane. people cried all the time. Like, <laughs> about all, what? About, anything. about what? Like, about Chick fil A, about <laughs> Nestle's Quick, about like uh, Fruity Pebbles, Jimmy Dean Breakfast Sausage. Like, people like her. Literally, like, this would literally like you would go I to just love cars. it. I love it so much. Or or they <laughs> were just like to do? so happy to have like a forum that that uh, in which people or someone was interested in what they had to say in yeah, their opinion. Right. So we would do these weird things where you do like all of the all of the research methodologies and Matt, you know this from your girlfriend, I'm sure, is uh, uh, sort of drawn from anthropology, right? Yeah. So we would go into people's homes and we would do ethnographies. You know, we would yeah. like. You know, stay with them for four hours, sometimes even longer, and just go, go through their whole routines, go through all their decision making processes around how they buy certain products or what they do, go through their cupboards, you know, have them tell all the stories about their family. And at the end, they'd be like, Oh my God, that was so great. We had the best time. You have to come back and visit when, you were in when you're in town. It's like, we are not friends. I just asked you questions for four hours. You talked about yourself. So you but you just played the role of friend yeah. to, yeah, that, yeah. to what that person's exactly. definition yeah. is. Yeah. Someone just listened to them about how yeah. they buy cereal. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So yeah. it was stuff like that. And it was really great for a long time. Um, and then there would be time. So I was only doing it sort of part time. It paid really well. Um, and it was like, it you know, using using my skills, you know, and, and it was all stuff for kids and families. Right. So using my skills and understanding kids and families to sort of apply to these, you know, to this. It's like this. The problems, the solving of the problems were was interesting but the problems themselves were like. All right. So this is where, where it sort of went downhill for me was this one project I had to work on. That was um, for Fruity Pebbles, uh, which you know the cereal, right? Oh, of course, it. it's delicious. Yeah, it's delicious. It's I like love Fruity Pebbles. Sixty percent sugar. <laughs> I'm so but, glad right. I can finally so tell Fruity, somebody. Fruity Pebbles is having this big problem where, like, their sales chart they showed it to so it was just like <laughs> for like forty years it had been like this. Steep, well, it's like highlighter decline. pens and what cereal, year? And what sugar. year was a uh, peak Fruity Pebble? Probably in the seventies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're 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 yeah they're they've been on, on their way down for a long a long time. Okay. And I was like. At what point did you realize you had a problem? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like here and like there's no like upticks or anything yeah, like that. It's yeah. just like this steep. And they're and, like about there. Yeah, right <laughs> now, today. <laughs> right like when, when we profit, hired you. The profit right, went yeah. to zero because right. for so long yeah, it, was it was so just high. Like, the markup yeah. was whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's just literally sugar pressed into a flake, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like that's all it is. So it wasn't God, not it's that it's expensive. So, <laughs> so they realized that, one, that the one market that they still <laughs> – had and that was that was increasing was poor children so uh they were like we need to figure out how to sell more fruity pebbles to poor children <sighs> um so i was going into like you know the projects and places like this and like talking to families and i was like i gotta yeah i no. gotta maybe make some make some reconsider yeah. some things in my life for a little while here maybe pull back from the from the packaged goods world that's um, would that's, you like hand I, them a note that's folded up you like it's like i can't say this out loud but eat vegetables <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> listen yeah. to michelle obama <laughs> right yeah exactly like, she knows Tune what's in. best right yeah <laughs> um that's yeah and that's that's, so that's brutal yeah that's, that's totally brutal that's kind of dark right yeah um, it is. And so also, the, you know, the, 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 we did realize one of the issues that Fruity Pebbles was having, which was one of, the, one of the kids was like, who is that creepy old man in the dress that's on the front of the box? And I'm like, Fred Flintstone? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we, shit. Yeah, that's we right. don't know who that guy is. <laughs> that's like, a good he's point. Beard, he has a beard uh, and he's wearing a dress. That's and he's, really funny. Yeah. And he's, yeah. I just read a tweet the other day and it was like... Some uh, someone who's a, a middle-aged person said, "My my son asked to to watch the Flintstones live-action movie from like whenever it was." Oh right, and I was oh, talking okay. to him about the Flintstones, and he didn't even know there was a cartoon. Oh right, he thought this movie was like it, the whole thing. Tom so Arnold, I guess I guess no. for young people, the Flintstones. Tom are total, John Goodman, I think. John Goodman. Oh yeah, John Goodman. Yeah, I love that movie. I was about that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember it all. Was that like your 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 uh, totem? Was, was the Flintstones my? T uh, that was his no, Schindler's List. I actually was. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably a little more, a little more Jetsons. Maybe mm -hmm. I think if I had to pick one, I think I might have been Jetsons. Yeah, I had uh, more future than when past. I was really young. I had Thundercats. Oh yeah, and then I was one of the test audience for Captain Planet. What like was, I got. Remember Captain that, Planet? Uh, uh, no, it's I'm, like the I'm environmental like fifty years older than you, right? 
Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> big in like the early '90s. Yeah, I wasn't really watching cartoons then. I was in. I was point. graduating from college. That's a good right? point. <laughs> you wouldn't know what the fuck it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we did watch. Some I got cartoons. sense. It wasn't cassette. a cartoon for that in college. Though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I told them I thought it was terrible, and I meant it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, you did. You were. You would. You would have been like one of my subjects in. Yeah. Uh, in one of these. Yeah. yeah I, I used to do like a lot a of special pilot cassette. testing. Yeah. Mm. For like Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. There it is. Captain, oh, yeah. Captain Planet, Planet and the Planeteers. Oh, yeah, that looks familiar. Yeah, it's just shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was, it was we, the vegetable of television. Yeah, we would, show, Saturday morning, yeah, we would like, show kids these things. You know. And we're like, uh, they're like, that looks educational. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the, the Captain Planet. It's drawn Planet like that. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is educational. You're right. So, what was, uh, when you first started writing about cars for Vanity Fair, did yes. you just dive straight into Bentleys and yeah, Ferraris? Pretty you, much, yeah. Did you much. not have a writing about shitboxes phase? You no. never had to write about the base model Versa or anything? No. So no, spoiled. I never had. <laughs> no, I know. I look back, like, I had, I started this list just to, like, keep track for myself of, like, car delivery schedule. Yeah. And it's the same, like, I've had it now for 10 years or whatever, right? Yeah. So it's like, I don't have it with me, obviously, and I won't remember, but like pretty much like the third car or something like that was yeah. like a phantom drophead coupe. <laughs> like it was like pretty early on. Well, like, oh, what this was that is like how then? this is going to go. Because you're, then your previous experience, previous experience with cars was, you know, what your parents had and maybe what you owned. Yeah. And what your friends had. Yeah. And then you get to go. Maybe and maybe you had friends in society that might have had those kind of cars, but now you have this experience of like you're driving and sitting in this you know four hundred thousand dollars spaceship. Yeah, like I mean, how did was, your brain react to that? So I have this sort of uh, theory slash mantra that uh, all cars are drag. You know, it's like this is just like a costume that we put on and take off, right? So I've always sort of thought of it that way. Um, so that was helpful uh, in terms of just like immediately finding myself in these very fancy things. I also had like I went to. I was a scholarship student at a private high school uh, and went to school with a lot of auto executives' kids growing up in Detroit or whatever. Including, what school do you, can you uh, say? Cranbrook. Oh, yeah. So hey, he went to Cranbrook. Right. That's a private school. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> the eight mile, the eight eight mile eight club. Mile. Yeah. You're the school that gets called out at yeah. eight mile. Right. That's gets, fucking it great. Gets, yeah, it gets, <laughs> it gets bl blasted in eight, in eight mile. Um, which is fine. Yeah, we, we produced a quite, a, quite, there's quite a few guys in the industry that, you know, Eddie, Eddie Alterman. Oh, went yeah. To, went to, we went to high school together. And, and Kuroga, Tony Kuroga <laughs> went to Cranbrook as well. So so Tony today. Folks. We yeah. need to get him back on the program. He yeah. should be back on the program. Yes, Tony is fantastic. Uh Anyway, so I had opportunities there. Like my friend Drew was, uh, his dad was the CEO of General Motors, so they would get like all the competitive, you know, yeah. the competitive cars, including actually a Countach. Really? Um, yeah, like when it was. When what it was were they? New. Oh, were, what were they benchmarking then? Were they trying to do some? I think they were just like. Let's we, like, just, we yeah. should walk. we can write it was like GM in the eighties. Yeah. They had the the fuckets. Yeah, they're like yeah. Sure. We can probably just we get can write this, this up. Yeah. We can have yeah. this. We, we can all you know. Yeah, take we can it all drive weekend, this around for a weekend. Know, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, like Drew could drive it to prom. You know, that's awesome. We double dated that for prom. He, he drove. Yeah, the Countach. Yeah, that's it, awesome. Does it have a mirror in it? You know, it was the eighties. Like, have you seen the Coke mirror in my car? You, I think you told me about it. I don't know if my Countach has a Coke mirror. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. In the glove box? No, it's in the instead of like a vanity mirror yeah. on the visor you fully take the mirror out and it's a leather <laughs> it's literally a leather wrapped credit coke. card sized fucking mirror wow it's a coke mirror yeah unquestionably i think that's why, probably true why else would you I, remove I the coke hands free ability of a mirror why, why else would you have a lamborghini in the 80s <laughs> <laughs> It's or, sort of which or came first, or right? now, or now. What? Yeah. <laughs> so that, um, so I did have some like, yeah. some great uh, okay. like automotive experiences like, early on. Yeah, like when I was younger, I kind of like made it. I, I was sort of like obsessed, you know, with cars, and so I just any my friends or anyone I knew who had a car, I would yeah. ask if I could try it. So did you have that too? Yes. So you had sort of a little database going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. I mean, and it was like a very set period. It was like you know, nineteen eighty five to nineteen eighty seven or whatever, you know. Because then after that, you know, no, I couldn't talk about my. So when you started writing, you're like, you had to go in the right. closet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything was so. Everything you drove as, when you had the job was so much faster than everything you drove in high school because those, everything was shitty back then. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> things were pretty <laughs> crappy back then. And I had a, I had a BMW 2002. I had a 73 oh, yeah, 2002 okay. in high school, which is like, you know, yeah. one of those early imprint cars that like sure. everyone who loves cars probably had one at some yeah. point. Yeah. Um, 
So, but yeah, it was it was pretty exciting. My my friends were baffled because none of them even knew that I had this affection for cars. They're like, "Why is this happening? Can yeah. you explain to us why this is happening?" All like, of a sudden, you show up with a drop head. Yeah, like, and they're like, "Why do you? Why are you writing about cars and why are you driving this? This is actually kind of like it's, you're scaring me. Like yeah. something weird is going on." Well, that's that's I mean that's like a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar car to show up. Yeah. it's not like you showed up even with like a three series or right. something. Like yeah. you went. You right. went into the pool. All the way in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like picked up some friends of mine who are like lesbian academics that were teaching at NYU. It's like May Day or something like that. We're like driving around Washington Square Park <laughs> in this, in this drop If it was head. anybody else, they would hate that person. Right, if yeah. It wasn't, right. I mean, drive. I feel like, yeah, they probably hate me. Rolls, no, Rolls is like, they make people really happy. Yeah. If you show up to pick somebody up in a Rolls, yeah. like, even more so than like a supercar. Because you can enjoy what a Rolls is at like two miles an hour. Yeah, you don't need to be exactly, going fast Exactly, especially with that. the top down. Hell yeah. I yeah. drove to Detroit. I went to the Dream Cruise three years ago in a in a Dawn. Okay, nice. And the one they gave me was orange with a white interior. Oh, it was a yeah. creamsicle. I love that. And I drove around Michigan in some, some rough parts of Detroit, and they loved yeah. me in the hood. Everyone loves the Rolls, right? Yeah. I made everyone's Instagram life <laughs> that day. I would, I pulled over at a gas station in the hood, and like I let everybody come take pictures in the car. Yeah. I was the king of that neighborhood that yeah. day. It was great. Everyone loves the Rolls. I did a story for, I was doing this like Cars and Stars thing for Billboard for a while, and we did a story with DJ Khaled, yeah. where we drove around in a, in a drophead coupe. Um, and he's driving, right? Like he's supposed to be test driving the car and he has a couple of rolls as I think already or something like that. So they were happy to let him borrow it. But we're driving like from his record label or his agent's office or something to like some other event that he had to go to. And there was no way that we were going to make, he was like mm. two hours late, you know, <laughs> by the time he got down, we're like parked on the street. The cops are just hassling us. We're in yeah. midtown. Like there's, there's nowhere at anyway. So while he's driving, I'm interviewing him, right? This is my shot at doing the interview is like during the drive. And I don't know if he had any hands on the wheel because he's like, you know, he, the only person that uses his phone more than like my 14 year old niece, you know, he's just like, <laughs> he does, on, yeah. yeah, on constantly. And he was on so much and so many people are tuned in. Well, first of all, like every, oh, every like single streaming. Yeah. yeah every okay. single person in all of New York knows who he is. Right. So it's right. like, Literally, like the old, the old lady, you know, Korean lady coming out of the deli, the mail carrier, like some hipster kid, like anyone. You can't even like the cross section was outrageous. Everyone was like, Colin, Colin, like coming out of the coming out of the out of every store. Someone gave him their baby to sign, oh like they wanted him to sign their baby, right? For real? Yes, that's like a Chappelle, that's a Chappelle yeah. bit. Oh my oh, god! Yeah. And so, meanwhile, he's live streaming, yeah, he's live streaming while, the whole driving thing while driving rolls in Manhattan. And so, at a certain <laughs> point, this whole group of like distracting at all. kids on bikes, right? Like kids on like BMX bikes are following his stream they and they figure is. out where we are. Right? And so then they were, we're like surrounded, you what know, like going down Lower Fifth Avenue, surrounded by these kids on bikes. And he's like, you know, slapping fives out like both sides of the both sides of the car. But um, it that's did, like, yeah. a, that's like a Wednesday for him. Yeah. Yeah. This was just like, you know, 15 minutes in his in his day, day of, of lunacy. Um, I did get him to do like a shout out to two of my nieces, uh, like a little video shout out, and they were very excited about that. Yeah, but like, did you walk away from that just exhausted and going, "Thank God I'm not famous like that"? Yes, I it think seems that miserable. Yeah, I think that almost all the time when there's someone like super <laughs> famous that you have to hang out with, it seems it's kind of yeah, it seems it seems like a very trying. It's a constant state of can we go already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hung, yeah. out, I hung out in, a, ho in a, ho a Vegas hotel lobby. I had to get from the valet to the elevator with Goldberg. Right. And Goldberg is, he doesn't seem that famous, but yeah. in Las Vegas, oh, an yeah. ex wrestler his, yeah. is that's his, fucking that's his demo. Right. famous. <laughs> and he, I mean, it took 45 minutes to cross the hotel lobby. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. Great. And I just went, thank God that's not, not me, me ever. Yeah. Ever. Exactly. You just get spotted a, like, Cars and Coffee. Yeah, or Cars like and that. Coffee. I'm mildly famous, right. but I don't. I don't have to go to Cars and Coffee. Right. I can. Yeah, it's, I can yeah. be At totally. The supermarket. It's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. no one's like trying to stop you. Yeah. Oh, uh, but that dude. That's a pretty. Uh, that's a pretty cool uh, intro to. You really found a loophole. Yeah, you found an excellent loophole. Right. Yeah. So you I came so, in through the side door. I came in through the side and at the top, and that's how I like to that's do things. Fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking. 
that's pretty dope. That's a yeah. good one. I'm not that much of a. I'm not like a joiner, and I'm not that much of a like a rule follower. I think in general, like I'm not like the ordinary course of business kind of rule follower. Like I got a job as a motor gopher, and then you know I worked my way up through this and this, which means that. You know, there's large holes in my understanding of things. Like, I don't know how magazines work. I don't know how the internet works. Well, but, I don't know how cars okay, work. Okay, really. so you, if you're writing for Vanity Fair, you're getting fucking phantom drop heads. You're pimping. Now, you have 50 other fucking outlets on your <laughs> resume. How how do you decide? Like, okay, I'm going to freelance, and this is how this procedure. Where I get a lot of career questions yeah. from fans. Like, how yeah. do I do this job? And so when I have career people on, it's like, how do you do the job? Right. Like the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah. Well. Uh, people ask me this question a lot too because there's not that many people that successfully freelance you know um, well, it's, the ha- it's hard yeah yeah so part of it is I I, I actually kind of like the hustle you know like I like I like to sell stories I like to uh, get new outlets I like to find p- new places to sort of tell the stories that I like to tell Um so that's that's fun. That's part of it, right? And then, so you think up a story and you go, "Oh, that'll be good for Bloomberg because it's got a money yeah. angle, or that'll be good for whatever." Yeah. It's got, okay. So, but you know, developing the outlets was really just sort of going to car shows and starting to go on like press launches on occasion and things like that, and meeting people and getting to know them. And um, then either they sometimes would ask me for something, or I would you know pitch them on stories. And so I just I started. I just sort of started developing a suite of outlets that I would that I wrote for, and the you know the the car magazines like uh, Car and Driver, Auto Week, uh, Automobile, Road and Track, all of those. Um, they have a lot of respect for people who are writers. You know what I mean? Yeah, They're yeah, good yeah. at writing. You know? Yeah. Um, and most as magazines. opposed to just a car enthusiast yeah. who is trying to write. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so that was part of it. Is like. People are like, oh, how do you how are you so successful as a writer? It's like, well, I came at this first of all as a writer. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I was a fiction writer. I taught fiction writing. That was another job I had. I was a university level fiction writing professor at the New School in New York. So I taught fiction writing for for eight years, short story writing. What years? Um, from like ninety nine to oh eight. Oh wow! Like I wonder if you taught a couple of my friends. We can talk oh. about that later. Okay. Yeah. I, have, I had some friends from high school who ended up at the New School. Oh, right on. Yeah. I wonder if you yeah. while you were there. Yeah. Interesting. Um, which was great. So you know, I came I came into this as a as a writer. So I think that's part of it as well. A lot of people that come in that end up doing this, and I've had conversations even with colleagues that are like, "Oh, I hate the writing. Like, I love cars. You know, like that's yeah. why I do that. The writing lets me drive cars." Um, which you know that makes sense. I get it. Um, but so I came at this for, as a writer, and so I think that gave me. The a, cars a just give of, you something to write about. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And I you know and I love cars and I love the industry and I always have, but. Um, and I followed it, you know, even when I wasn't writing about it. Uh, but I think so. That was definitely part of yeah. it was just well, having you that ability. You didn't, you didn't start it with like a target of I'm write about cars, and you have to only write about cars because a lot of us, and the I think the people that ask the questions, the easy, I'll say the the simpler, more surefire way to get into the jobs we have is to, like you said, start at the bottom yeah. and stay in that kind of arena and only work in that arena, and you'll you know work your way up to the top. Whereas you were like writing about all kinds of stuff yeah. and then happen to find a doorway into the car thing. But if you hadn't, you would have been fine and kept writing about other things. I think it's probable. So, yeah. Although I don't know. I feel like the car thing really like took off for me. Like it was really a good, it was a really good spot. I think part of it is also like, uh, you know, I'm an, I'm a, I'm a New York City person. I lived in New York for the almost the past 30 years. Um, there's a lot of magazines and publications are headquartered there. It's mm-hmm. not a car city, you know. It has the lowest rates of mm-hmm. car ownership of any city in the country, and within the context of of Manhattan itself, they're even lower. Um, and people just don't think about cars, but it's a you know it's still a relevant topic that they need to cover. So I sort of came in as this like stealth, like I'm like a person that like speaks the language of New York, but one I also the, speak I mean, the one of the of ways cars. in Manhattan they do think about cars is as a luxury good. Right. So if you approach it from a luxury goods angle yeah. and not a car enthusiasm angle, yeah. that's the side door. Yeah. And so that, it's yeah, talking that talking figuring out how to write for like a lifestyle yeah. audience about cars. But convey, conveying, you know, passion but also, and but not getting mired in the in the details of, uh, and which is helpful for me because I actually don't really know how how cars work. Like I don't know anything about like how cars work or how the suspension works or how an engine works. I have, I have no okay. actually no business being uh, as, as well 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 uh, reputed uh, automotive writer. 
probably. I, I don't, don't sell yourself short, dude. I don't think <laughs> any, I'm not a good mechanic. Right. I don't wrench on my own shit. Okay, good. I can tell you the basics of how an engine works, and if yeah. it's like fluids coming from somewhere, I can go, it's from there. Right. And it's the <laughs> green one. Yeah, right. but that's about all I got, man. It's a cool. Yeah. No, no, no hatred There's here. a lot of ways to cover the subject, I guess. Yeah. I yes. It's, it's, uh, and I know I was guilty of this years ago, but like it's narrow-minded to go, everyone who dry, who writes about it should be X fast and X good at wrenching, and I was none of those things, by the yeah. way. But it was just this weird definition of what it should be, and it's actually like you can get a great story or great insight from someone who possibly has very little experience with cars because they'll see it through a totally different lens yeah. and teach you something different about that. I think that's totally true. Uh, it, it, it happens a lot where you get into these conversations, or I've had these conversations with people in the industry that that write about cars, and they'll be like, "Oh, so and so, yeah, he's really fast," you know, and mm-hmm. like. We're not race car drivers, you know what I mean? Like, that's good if that well, helps you to do what you're doing. if you're going to that doing. person for a certain thing, yeah. you know, if I really am going for analysis of a sports car, yeah. it helps if I'm reading someone that right. I know really is fast. Knows it's doing it. Yeah. And I think if someone says that, it may uh, be indicative of what their interest in cars is, or maybe right. they, I think a lot of journalists wish they were race car drivers, and you don't have the resources when you're growing up, or whatever happens, so it's a way to get access to really fast stuff, yeah. and probably fund some sort of education with driving. Yeah, no, that's true. But I always think, like, our job is writer, you know? Yeah, yeah. So no, my favorite writers aren't the fastest people, but like... If I'm I I go to those fast guys right. for certain yeah, things. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, but the writing is more important. Yeah, if you're competent driving, like you know, the writing is more important. For yeah. Sure. Um. So yeah. So it's just uh, it just sort of flowed out from there. So I started writing for some places, and then, and what happens too in like the New York magazine world, especially, it's like people move around a lot, right? So it's like I have an editor at Vanity Fair, and then he he leaves and he goes to Esquire and then I write for them and then he leaves and he goes to Bloomberg and then I write for them and then he leaves and goes to Departures and I write for them and then someone else takes his place at those places and they're like, oh, who was the car guy we were using before? Oh, Brett Burke, okay, right. Well, well, he can still do it here. So it's just sort of like that's the other thing. It like, spirals if out. If you kind of stick in it long, like if you make friends with the writers, like eventually one of them might be the editor and then he's going <laughs> to hire you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, that... That's happened with me at Road and Track. No, like, absolutely. Oh, I from made friends with Travis. Oh, now, oh, he's the editor now. Right, great. great. This right. works. Yeah, <laughs> now I get to write for them. Yeah, um, yeah. And so now, it, it, I think the other big thing in terms of like career advice is, uh, I am relatively compulsive. So it's like I I always get my work in on time and like pretty ready to go, like clean. Um, and so people are like well what can i do to be a successful freelancer it's like actually turn in your story on time also don't be a dick you know what i mean like don't, yeah. just don't be an asshole about things all the time when you're dealing with your editors um True but a lot of many it, jobs really yeah but, you know. probably of almost any job but these are like basic things and people are like oh wow yeah i guess i should turn in stuff on time that's a good idea well a lot of people get surprised and they go how do i do what you do and i go well you start with learning adobe premiere pro right. <laughs> you know and I, I list off 10 like really unglamorous things that are really important and then they're like i just meant you know driving the cars it's like this is the things that you do yeah you know the driving the cars like that much part of it yeah Yeah. exactly and then it's um, yeah it's like you know a lot about sort of just like research and reporting and all that kind of stuff as well so now you've been doing that for like what 10 years yeah pretty much so 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 give me give me some highlights from the 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 oh. side door entrance of luxury <laughs> car reporting. Tony, I saw Tony today. Yeah. He goes, make sure you ask Brett about going to the Geneva Auto Show with Chris Singh. Oh yeah, that was so, a good one. You know, who Chris Singh is Chris mm-hmm. Singh is Johnny Lieberman's like Lamborghini guy, who apparently has all the money. Yeah, he has a lot of cars. He has a lot um, of cars. And uh, what's his Instagram? It's Lamborghini, Lamborghini KS. Lamborghini KS. Yeah. yeah. So Chris, Chris and I went to Geneva this year, and I've written uh, some other stories about Chris in the past. When he uh, when he got his Veneno, uh, one of the three oh. Lamborghini Venenos. Tim, we did a that's story. fine. Go ahead. Yeah. We did one of the. We'll see. We did a story uh, for um, Centurion, which is the American Express Black Card Holders magazine mm-hmm. that only goes to black card holders. And as it turns out, if you tell people that you're writing for that magazine and they have a black card. To a one, they take it out and show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> this happened to me like four different times. Inclu- These are like the survey people. They're so excited yeah. that they can take that yeah, black like, card. That's out amazing. It's true. Oh yeah, I am. A, wow. I get Centurion because I'm a black card holder. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, 
But anyway, so we did. A, I did that story with Chris. I did a story with him uh, for Car and Driver last year, or the year before. That was called like the Rich Guy Car List. It was all about sort of how you get on the list to get you know like a like a La Ferrari. I remember that or, story? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was my story. Anyway, so and we've we've done a couple other things. So this year I'm going to the Geneva Show, and I was like, I wrote to Chris and I said, um, I know that like in the past you've gotten you've seen things that you like and bought cars at Geneva. Let's let's do, you want to do a story where we go shopping? You know, we go like car shopping. Because this is one of the things that happens, right, at the Geneva show. I did a story for Vanity Wait, Fair. Wait, this doesn't years. happen at really other shows. Um, I mean, we Does it? you have to remember, and we lose track of this, I think, sometimes as journalists, car shows are for consumers. Yeah. Like, this is where people go to, like, figure out, like, here's all the cars, like, yeah, they on my consideration. they buy them set. there. They go no. to dealers later. Yes, that's true. That's so, true. What but, you're implying is that you went to the Geneva Auto Show and treated it like a dealership. Correct. And people, <laughs> this this is true that people do do this. Like, okay. Yeah. So this is what the story is about, is like going behind the scenes, talking to the sort of the executives, the VIP people at like McLaren, Bugatti, uh, where else do we go? Aston Martin, those kinds of places. And, like, and, and being treated like someone who's... who's Ready to buy yeah. and will and will buy and, right and, now. And the same thing. I did a story for Vanity Fair a few years ago about Pebble Beach. Same thing. Aston Martin sells as many cars at Pebble Weekend with their pop up shop yeah, yeah. as a dealer will sell in a year. I went there. It's Macl- yeah, it's, it's fucking sick. Yeah, it's McLaren's <laughs> biggest weekend. Like wow. all of their Bugatti had. What did they? Have? They had sixty, sixty of their customers. I think at Pebble Beach that year. <sighs> And this is, you know, a company that sold less than a thousand cars, right? Yeah. And a lot of them to repeat buyers. So at at uh, Geneva, they had a hundred of their customers that would come through during those two days. And people are, are you know, they want to be a part of the, of the family, but they're also like in the market. Yeah. So Chris is in the market. So we we went shopping, and he's very savvy about the cars that he buys. He's, um, you know, every everything is an investment. Everything is an appreciating investment, you know. He's he he holds on to his cars. He doesn't f- sell them or flip them. But were he to sell them, you know, he would make money on every single one of them. So he's he's smart and strategic about this. But he so in the course of you know an hour or so that we're walking around, he spent he bought four million dollars worth of cars. <laughs> yeah. So he bought a wow. He in bought an hour. A, about an hour or two. But yeah. is that like? I mean that's amazing, but is that two cars? Two cars, yeah. It's two that's cars. True. That's it could two be cars. one. There. Okay, so yeah. let me guess. He, he did he buy a Bugatti? He did not, but he was working on getting a getting a Devo. Okay. Um, but he bought a, a the new uh, uh, Koenigsegg, the Jes- Jesco. Jesco, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he bought a AMR 003, the, the oh the new the new Aston Martin. Yeah. Uh, so are they actually thing. taking deposits the on Valkyrie? that shit? No, not the Valkyrie. He already has a Valkyrie. Oh. <coughs> yeah, he has a Valkyrie on order with paint that has moon rock in it. <laughs> like actual moon rock. Dude! <laughs> listen, bro. <laughs> listen, there's too many rich people. Well, we, yeah. Does but it, I mean, does it have moon, moon rocks! Rock on it? Moon how, rocks. how do they get the moon rock? And how do they bring it back? I, the weight. You're going to have to You're gonna have to ask Chris, moon but rock. it literally has mo- ground Actually, moon rock in it. Bro, I I, do- my new Aston Martin has Neil Armstrong's ashes in the paint. <laughs> so there. I d- <laughs> well, Chris, Chris told this hilarious story when we were doing the Rich Guy Carlos story where I was, I was trying to just get like ridiculous requests because this is one of the things, right? Like all of these companies... Uh, have these specialty in-house builders that will do sort of anything you want, and he, yeah, the coach coach building yeah. is is back apparently. Yeah. That new Ferrari, that oh, right. track Ferrari, yeah. that shit is fire. No, it looks really good. That looks hot. <laughs> yeah, that was fire. So he he told the Lamborghini people, he's like, I want a like a missile launcher on the back of my <laughs> on the back of my Lamborghini. He was joking with them, of course, and they're like, Chris, we will we, throw up the specs. Yeah, we can't do the missile launcher. You know, <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we went we went shopping at the at the Geneva show, um, and he bought. That's he bought baller. Those two what cars. Are, what do your other insano rich friends do? What other what other fucking crazy shit have you hung out with people while they were doing? There's that new <sighs> Ferrari track car. Oh yeah, that's really good. That looking. is Fuego. Yeah, that looks really really Ooh, it's good. Got, from that angle, it has a little bit of like four GT. Little four GT, which yeah. is yeah. not yep. bad. Yep. Ever. Also a little NSX. Yeah. Yeah. And a. a, a yeah, a little, it's, and, it's and some for our, yeah, yeah, some launch. Just that's the angle yeah, right there. That the front angle. right three quarters, the shit. Yeah, that's very nice. No, it's really good looking. Very cool. Very nice. Um, Super. Tent let's see. Windshield. I'm trying to. Th- I'm terrible. Have at, you ever I'm gone terrible. through one of the the coach building departments like this? Like that's a, that's a really good question. No, I haven't ever done that. I mean, we should. I should out. do a story like that. Yeah, yeah. I did. Take me with you. Yeah, <laughs> no, that would be fun. That would be fun. 
Um, I did a story. I'm terrible. I'm really bad at remembering things off the top of my head. I did do a story uh, maybe last year for Vanity Fair where we went uh, driving with Michael Fassbender, the actor, right? So he was doing like the Ferrari Challenge race. Mm -hmm. And I so, think Spike was cool. somehow involved in the project with him in Ferrari Challenge. I don't know. Oh, really? I think so. It's possible. But he also narrated my favorite documentary, which is One, the movie. Oh, Did you ever right. see it? I didn't see it. it. Watch it. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. See, this is the other thing. Like, I don't know how to fix cars. I don't know how the internal combustion engine works. I don't really like racing. No, no. This, <laughs> I promise you, I swear to God, this is a documentary about racing for non-race nerds. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 I did it, watch that Senna one. And did I liked you like it. Senna? Yeah. Okay. If you liked Senna, this has the the pacing of Senna, but it's not depressing in the way that Senna is depressing. Yeah. 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 It's it's a, I promise okay. you, it's really really good. And it's yeah. about Formula it's, One. It's racing? about Formula One. It's about the history. Of, <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, it's good. Okay. You're gonna have to take my word for All it. All right. I believe I know you. people don't like movie recommendations, but no, uh, I don't mind movie it's recommendations. So just like. Ra- don't like it's, racing. Look, right? I mean, I, I don't follow F1 that closely because one, it got kind of boring the last couple of years, but two, like time. But I, I agree. I like driving. I like cars that I think are more relatable to me. Mm-hmm. And then I watched Senna and one. And then most recently I watched that the new Netflix series, uh, Driving. Yeah, that shit's to, dope too. To and it's like. Someone else it, said that it, that's it, really good. It's it very really well good. done. It's basically every episode is cut almost like a movie trailer. So it's okay. either like lots of tension and drama. And then there's like little breaks where you know the music kind of calms down and it's a little bit of behind the paddock what's happening and and it shows you behind the scenes what happens with drivers and funding and them competing and that kind of stuff and then it's cut like a movie trailer and there's all this action and anticipation again. The only bad thing we found out is that some of the narration that is that's played off as uh, like live commentary from the race broadcast is not. Yeah, it's they like fake some really? yeah. it, which is why it's so fucking perfect. Uh, some, right. of it, some of it's real, yeah. but they sneak in a few yeah. like plot drivers as well, yeah. and they put that radio voice on there to make it really yeah. sound like it's period. You know, because you're like, man, they're talking about eighth place a lot yeah. in this race. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're ignoring Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, the entirely. battle for eighth right. is the on fire. Yeah. Eighth, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's but it's good. If you, so if you're not into racing, you'll probably still like, it, and, you, and you get better appreciation for racing, and yeah. Okay. And, and well, one you'd like, I think, it, because the pacing is very good. It's not a slow talking heads documentary. Yeah. It's got very good pacing. Okay. It's, but you have a 95 SOP, so you might not like fast pacing. <laughs> right, yeah. You you I don't really slow. have any fast cars, do I? <laughs> right. I mean, the 928 is about as fast as it gets, and that's, I mean, it was fast for pretty its quick. day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty quick. quick. Yeah, pretty yeah. quick. Does it work properly? It does. Nice. Yeah, it's in good shape. We looked we looked pretty hard for that one and found one that was like a, a, a doctor who owned in like South Dakota. And when I talked to, you know this guy, J.G. Uh, Francis, who runs Mercedes Motoring yeah. here in Glendale, he fixes yeah, up like yeah. the old W123 Mercedes. Oh, I talked about Spike. Uh, he's a little out of his mind, right? He's amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 He's no, a, he's like a genius, but yeah. he's like kind of crazy, right? Apparently, he keeps offering to sell Spike some cars, mm-hmm. and we were going to go halves on this uh, this wagon, maybe, yeah. but then he like changes his mind and one decides really? he doesn't want to sell them <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but I was asking that's him- That's it, the green ones, Tim, oh, second yeah. row. That's the one. So good looking. Yeah. It's not a great picture, but it's it's a, it's a not a high res picture, but it's uh, but that was one of those. But I did a story about him, I think, for maybe for men's health or something like that. And, and uh, I was like, well, where do you find the best cars? Are they all from like California or the Southwest? And he's like, no, the best cars are from the like, upper Midwest because people really took care of them. They would only drive them in the summertime and they would just put them away. So they're all like put away in heated garages. Uh, in the in the winter or whatever, I was like, okay. Anyway, that's where we found our nine twenty eight in like uh, South Dakota. in the upper Midwest, South oh, Dakota. Perfect. Yeah, I'm a- I'm looking for a car right now. I don't think I want to say what it is. Okay, you don't want to drive up the prices. Well, I <laughs> fucked myself a couple times by doing this. Yeah, and the car I'm looking for is not a car that you think of mm-hmm. as being rare. Yeah, but it's actually quite rare. And so I got my man Vinny searching nationally. And I just found one that's like great, but it's in Chicago. Yeah, like I don't know, Ru- Russ. But it yeah, could be kind of like it no. could be one of those cases that it's like was you know just driven it in the summertime. Be. It and does look away. nice, but I don't I don't know. I'm I think I'm just I don't think I'm gonna wait a little and find the next. Well, it's possible because I know I know think I know the car you're thinking of. That person may have had a winter vehicle that yeah, they would switch into. Yeah, that happens a lot in that yeah. market. If you're not from the upper Midwest as I am. Uh, People do have winter beaters. Like do, people yeah. drive a car, you just get a shitty car and drive it all winter. Some my my dad's friend, he <laughs> drives an SL and he puts winter tires on in the winter and he drives it in the winter. I'm like, you're one of the only people that does that. Yeah, and fuck yeah, good for you. <laughs> I bet you like, yeah, it's great. I bet you the SL is really fun on winter I bet tires. It's Four thousand pounds or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. 
I guess yeah, I was uh, the uh, the Acura NSX engineers today at the Long Beach Circuit oh, yeah. were really admiring my SL. They were like, "Ah, it's really clean, dude." Today. How was driving you, that you track a, though? R one hundred and seven. I have a one two nine. Oh, okay. I have nice. a two thousand one. Yeah, and it, it's silver with the AMG wheels and the silver hardtop. Yeah, and it's it's great. Yeah, it's that's my nice. traffic car basically. Okay. Nice. Um, but it's the only car I own right now that fits my camera case. So it's also <laughs> if I have to go film something, that's what I'm taking unless I have a press car. So, but I got to go drive the Long Beach Grand Prix Circuit today. Oh. In a new NSX, is that, is that going on right now? Next week. Uh, yeah, well, t- oh. t- today is uh, today is like uh, practice uh, okay. for for various stuff and like media days and whatever. But okay. the circuit's set up, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we don't really people don't really get to drive that track. It's like a street circuit they take down. So, right. uh, Dane Cameron, who is the Acura like prototype driver, was doing lead follow in another NSX with me, uh, which was good because I have no idea where the track right. goes <laughs> and it was literally the first time ever going on it um, and uh, really fun fast ac- track actually I mean, if you don't hit the wall it's actually a really fun layout to drive that's kind of interesting and so you're like, the surface in, kind of it the seems like it's always some camber and weird stuff there is a potential for a big jump drift if you turn it into one like that, the last turn onto the straightaway where Formula Drift cars start mm-hmm. is a jump drift if you take it hot and inside. Whoa, um, gnarly. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's a. I, have, I made a little video, and so, uh, but it's it's a really cool track. I'm. I'm some kind of jealous down that the race car drivers get to drive it. If you go to Long Beach, you'll just be driving. I've done it before. You're driving along the shore, and all of a sudden you look up, and you're like, oh, it's like a catch fence. Oh, this is this yeah. turn. <laughs> and, you just, <laughs> the circuit. and you're just like yes. going downtown. Yeah, yeah there's like, cur- like, there's curbing going into this parking lot. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. But like going around that fountain and shit, like, oh, it's all, the right, I was like, oh, this is all right. pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 138 miles an hour on the back straight, like next to a mall. That's cool. <laughs> pretty <laughs> pretty cool. cool. That sounds yeah. scary. But you could have, you could have a crash there. I mean, you could have a really, really bad crash there. There's, there's zero runoff. It's, it's, it's wild. But shout out to Acura. That was fun. That's really cool. That does sound like fun. It was fun. Although I'm that's another thing that it's like even actually driving on the track, I'm terrible <laughs> at it. And like I have, a, I have a spatial relations issue. Mm-hmm. Like I'm actually like a debility. So I also have a terrible sense of direction. I really have no skills that apply to this People job. People are except right. screaming at the yeah. computer. Right? I know. They're like, yeah. why does so this funny. asshole get to drive it, all the cars? You and- know what? It shows you the importance of writing. Right. That's why. If you're a good writer, <laughs> yeah. people will forgive um, Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> I'm a shitbag, uh, drug addict, great writer. They'll forgive yeah. I'm a, I am a writer. I do, do not profess to be an expert driver. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the track just confounds me like i can go around like i can look at the map for an hour i can walk walk around it i can drive around it with a professional driver 10 times every single time i'm like oh there's that turn again <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Where, where do i go right? well yeah. most consumers i think we forget would also be confounded by that thing and they yeah. don't race and they don't track and like yeah. you know we, we're driving this luso around and I, th- I thought it has like the rear steer which i thought was it was funny. Like oh the, yeah, Zach the front, had, the front a, steering had a was day light. At the Ferrari Luso. I felt like I felt like all the steering feel I was getting was from the back and through my seat. It was really like on Angela's car. So it was kind of unsettling. Because the strange. rear steer was so aggressive. I think I think it's just at at medium speed at a medium corner where it's like, ooh, do I oppose the front wheels or do I go with the front wheels? Like I just felt like all the steering was happening in the back, like a fire truck. I thought it was a little odd. But I'm sitting there, I'm going. Otherwise, this is a fast comfortable ferrari the interior is gorgeous the red leather's cool i think it looks gorgeous on the exterior yeah and in, uh with the exception of some tire noise like yeah it'd be a really fun thing to gt and, and it's a different solution than an sl and yeah. most of the people that buy these cars will get in it and go this is amazing i'm really happy now yeah. yeah that's my favorite contemporary ferrari i think i love that car i haven't driven one i've only sat in one and when i sat in it i went this is nice but that <laughs> bentley outside though oh yeah he's got the new bentley gt outside oh my god is that nice yeah. bentley hook it up yeah that <laughs> interior is incredible no they really went i mean really everyone nice. everyone has like up their interior game so much over the past decade yeah. you know and they used to be sort of a you know at the top of the heap you know in the first generation continental mm-hmm. whatever it's like oh my god look at that oh, four. wood you know and like all this stuff um and now you know a mercedes s class or even a E class or C class has really really nice materials, you know, really really nice interiors, mm-hmm. and so the Bentley was starting to feel a little faded. But this current one, like it is, it is all out, you know. Yeah. It's Tim, so can you nice. get an interior shot for us? Uh, he yeah, has that, that, color, that blue right? yeah, color is the I color have, he's right. has. It, it is sick. <laughs> there's the a, the, the badge. There's a detail on the side. There's like a fake 
vent that looks like a brake duct extractor, but it has this grate where it's like relief cut a 12. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh, the there's the interior. Yeah. Interior is extremely it's dope. It's really, really nice. And it has this like rotating. Punch in. Uh, oh, right. the yeah, the screen like in the, the middle. The so where those three, thing. those three gauges are, it rotates and that's the, that's the infotainment screen and then it rotates again. Uh, and it's it's matched to the to the wood and the and the other trim. It's very nice. When they showed they did this, they drove this car with the Grand Tour with that and the DB11 and the uh, what the 850, mm-hmm. and it was like you went from the shot of that interior to the DB11, and they pointed like the DB11 interior is bad. The DB11 interior, it's not it's not even good on the Vantage, <laughs> which is much good. cheaper. But it's like this is well, this is class class E. It, yeah, it's very very Real classy. Nice. Oh, it's, that, it's really, really. You mentioned nice. the DB Live, and it made me think of another one of those top-notch stories, right? Which I'm yeah. terrible at remembering. So, glad was, we can trigger you. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> there are two or three. There were two or three different experiences Did that came that? out. Yeah, what was that? Uh, did someone drop a giant pipe dinner, outside? Right, yeah, dinner bell bike. outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, thought I heard more I thought cowbell. Your, I thought it was my cauldron. <laughs> 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 Time for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so when they were filming, I guess it was. Uh, Spectre it was one of the uh, was that the last one or the one before James uh, Bond movie? Yeah, James, James, James Spectre. Yeah. Maybe what was the one before that? Quantum uh, of, Qua- Quantum okay. Solace. So yeah. it was Spectre, I guess, right? That yeah. was the one with the with the DB10. With the fake, yeah, the yeah. DB10. But yeah, yeah, they yeah. made only for the movie, right? Mm-hmm. So I got to go to Rome when they were filming that and do like a behind the scenes uh, when they were they were doing a car chase. It was like a the that jag that uh, jag concept car. Oh yeah, the oh, yeah. project. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that was the bad guys car, and then they were chasing the chasing the DB10 and jumping it off stairs. You know, yeah, yeah. And d- downstairs. I remember watching into, that going? Okay, yeah, <laughs> into the into the river. So I was there all. I got to go. You know, while they were filming that, like behind the scenes which was really fun and do a story about the, yeah. the stunts and talk to some of the cast and then when I came back to the states right before the movie came out um, the Aston Martin people were like would you want to drive the the Bond car um, and I was like sure and so it was the DB10 you know they made 10 of them for the movie and we took it to um, this is for another Vanity Fair story we took it we did a video for it as well um, we took it to the to the the coast highway, the Pacific Coast Highway, and like sort of just like drove drove up and down. But it was yeah. a it was a picture car, right? So it's a movie it's a movie car. It's a prop essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the windows don't open, right? There's no AC. It's not it's not licensed. What is what is it underneath? Is it, it was is a, it, it was advantage of the advantage underneath? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it I think it was a advantage, or maybe it was a maybe it was a um. A DB9, DB9 or something underneath. underneath. I think it was a. I think it was a Vantage okay. underneath. I think. I think you're right. Okay. Um, so it was. Yeah. It wasn't like. It wasn't like anything s- spectacular in terms of performance. Although <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. It was quite light because it had no interior. You know. <laughs> whatever. Like the gauges. The gauges were fake. Like everything was fake. Air sats, as we like to say. Um, but so it's like we're. It's beaming down sun. We don't have any permits, Oof. obviously. The car is not licensed to drive on any public roadway, so we're breaking like a hundred laws, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we eventually, there's that weird, where like down toward maybe toward Laguna, there's like a sort of like a shake and burger place that's right on the coast there. I don't know if you know this spot. Okay. So we go in, and they're like, "We're gonna get a, we're gonna get a good shot in this place or whatever." Like every single person that's working there and, and eating there just comes running out, and they're like so excited about the car, and they're like, "Okay, go up to the window and place an order or something." And I order a vanilla shake, shaken, not oh. stirred. They're like, "Okay, that's the line." Um, anyway, it's on video. Yeah, there's a video oh, okay. of that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I just did it for fun. Right? I was gonna say, I, I, yeah, I, sadly, yeah. it's on video. Oh. But it's how to drive. I mean, not amazing, you know, but so this is the kind of thing, right? Where you're like the experience oftentimes for me, at least of getting into these things is what's exciting. And that's what people are excited about. And it's fun to well. talk about later, but yeah. you're sweating your fucking balls yeah, off. Exactly. While you're doing I was literally yeah, like yeah. sweating balls and I was terrible. Yeah. Um, but it was really fun. It was a it was a fun experience. The car looked great. I thought. Yeah, it did. It did yeah. It By the way, really a good. shaken milkshake is like a cup of milk. You just drop ice ice cream <laughs> in it. It's gonna suck. I know. I know. That's not what they gave me, and I didn't drink it anyway. It's like I can't, you don't get this from drinking milkshakes, okay? Yeah. No, that, that car was very good looking. It yeah. Was, it was in good shape. And then, yeah. Yeah. Eleven's okay. Someone's really yeah. kept making a lot of money on those defenders too. They're they're selling like those replica defenders that look like the ones from Spectre. Oh yeah. You know, the ones from that first car chase. Yeah. 
Anyway, yeah. What else that, is going on? That was a good one. So what are uh, what is what is some like what's like the most absurd vehicle you've got to drive for a story then? Um, all right, I would say, and this is this is personal for me as well. Mm-hmm. Like I was down at uh, the Hilton Head Concours a few years ago, and um, Miles Collier. Do you know Miles? Oh Collier? yeah, uh, big yeah, car collector, yeah. right? So just this past year at at uh, Pebble Beach, right? He sold. His, he has one of two Duesenberg SSJs, right? It was like Clark Gable had one and Gary Cooper had the other one. Right, he had the right, Cooper right. car, right? So this was a car that in like in the nineteen early 1930s had, you know, a su- supercharged straight eight racing engine, essentially. Um, and like produced 400 horsepower, 400, right? ho- like oh, almost four- 400 horsepower, yeah. Um, and was zero to 60 in like under eight seconds, right? This is like Ferrari 308 yeah. kind of level, right? In, in 1932. Zero to right? 60 in under eight seconds, right. you're going to die. Right. That's going to rip his head off. <laughs> your they, face they, melts they think, off. They thought like if we went over 60 miles an hour, like our lungs would fly out of our body. Yeah. 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 yeah, this car could, you know, could cruise all day at like 100 miles an hour or whatever. Yeah. So I got to drive that car, right? That's awesome. And that, that car just sold this summer for like $22 million or something <laughs> like that. Um, and so this was like, you know, Duesenberg bar mitzvah cake, which I yeah. mentioned, not you know an SJ coupe, not an SSJ, you know one of two. I didn't, I couldn't dream that large when I was thirteen. <laughs> so I got to drive, I got to drive that car around. Uh, How's it drive? I mean, it's not like a that, tractor. It's not that easy to drive those cars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're you're in a you're in like like for as big as they are, like the cabin is about yeah, the cabin is about this big. This was a was a was like a. Black, black and silver, I want to say. Maybe that's another one. But whatever. Um, the cabin's really small. You know, the shifter's it's like, like a Hummer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like the shifter has this weird, like, down for one and then up for two and then over f- higher up for th- It's like some very strange pattern to it. Non standardized control. Yeah, it has Are the insane... pedals the same, normal? Yeah, they're. Uh... The steering column might come down in between the clutch no, but and like the brake. Yeah, 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 they're in the middle clutch. Yeah, they're in the they're in the, yeah, they're yeah. in the, they're in the normal position. You ever drive one where they're not? Yes. Oh, fuck you up. Yeah, that'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. Non synchro <laughs> transmission. Like you know, yeah. it's like oh, there's your interior. Is that it? About right? Yeah, that seems like about right. That's pretty. That's pretty luxurious. I mean, I there was that. a there was an extraordinarily luxurious yeah. car. Did it feel fast? It felt pretty fast. Like where you could you could get it into kick down mode when the supercharger. <laughs> Did um, it feel like there's not there wasn't a lot of like slack in the drivetrain from that? I feel like older cars they tend to be less of, le- either I mean the suspension might sag, but the drivetrain for some reason when I drive old cars feels like everything's locked real tight together. because yeah. they didn't they didn't want to make it smooth. <laughs> that's they didn't give it. a shit. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> isn't that it? That's not it. No, that's hum look, 3D. Look at that's look at rendering. look at for man. Um, that's like that's a speedster. Look, yeah. that thing is fucking crazy. You could probably find it uh because it sold it sold this summer, so um, you could probably find it like on the. Maybe on the, I think Gooding sold it. I can't remember who sold it. Timmy's only kind of good at Googling. He's yeah. good at adjusting cameras. Duesenberg SSJ. Uh, Gary Cooper. <laughs> It'll um, come up. You could find my story on it, probably. The, uh, <laughs> do the brakes feel sketchy? That's usually yeah. where it all goes yeah. wrong. There was, I mean, they're, you know, they're like iron drums, maybe only in the rear or something like, you know, some crazy thing like that. Like, not not uh not not <laughs> built for the for the speed or the heft of the oh, car. Oh, that's it. Yeah, the scallop there. Yeah, the speedster windshield, right? Is no? that it? Yeah, that's that's the one labeled Gary Cooper. Yeah. I think I remember that from the auction catalog. Yeah. It's yeah. a two-tone gray. It's yeah. gray on gray. Yeah, gray on gray. With like yeah. a peanut butter interior. Yeah. Mm. So, that I felt like that was a pretty crazy one. That's a good one. For me. I mean, you know, so it's whatever. It's like the Chiron, the Veyron, blah, 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 whatever, you know? Well, that's special because I think to Matt's point, cars don't drive like that anymore. Yeah. You know, like the model, what, T you drove? Oh like, my God, you were driving model T? You know, that's no. an experience. They're fucking impossible. Right, that seems terrible. Yeah, but. no, it's like doing like a riding lawnmower or something. Yeah. I just drove that Sherp thing, which is the most exciting thing I've like probably what is, ever driven. What is that? That. On my Instagram, it's the Russian like oh, yeah. drive over under through fucking yeah. anything. It's the most, it's the coolest thing you could ever drive. But I you did, have to reprogram your body a little bit. Guess how far it can go on one take of gas? <clears throat> uh, Thirty-five miles, twenty-eight hundred miles. What? What? But like, see the how? well. So it's got a really big onboard tank and a really oh, small obviously. engine. <laughs> and then Tim, pull up any picture of the, where I can see the side of it. Those plastic wheel centers. Yeah. Each of those is a ten-gallon fuel drum. No shit. <laughs> yeah. And how much got, is the total capacity fuel? I think it's like a yeah. hundred and forty gallons or something. It holds a bunch. That's it's a bunch of fuel. 
That's still incredible. An incredible range has, from it's a forty-four ounce. horsepower four-cylinder diesel. So it's MPG oh, okay. is actually quite good. Yeah, you're you run yeah. it at eighteen hundred RPM right. all the time. It can't shift above that. He, he, <laughs> yeah. he was texting me after he drove it, and he, and he was, I don't know. I asked, but he, he broke the range. I was like, expletive, exclamation point! What the fuck are you talking about? How's this even like? Yeah, yeah you can drive it across the country. They drove one. They drove one uh, across Russia, ten thousand kilometers without using roads, and across Russia. Wow. Um, I we drove it into a la- into a frozen lake, and then it becomes a boat. <laughs> Terrifying. Look, play, yeah. Tim, play the video on the right with the ice, top right. That one, yeah. This, this is, is fucking. This is gnarly. Look, you got, uh, you got sound on that. So we're in the sherp. Lake. We're driving across. How deep is the ice here? The water is about thirty foot deep. That's okay. Josh. He rules. Where do we think we're gonna break through? Right? See where it gets a little thin right there. Yeah. Watch this shit. Uh-oh. We're in a we're in a, a car. Ready? <laughs> oh, oh my god! That's where you shit your pants, dude. Oh my god! <laughs> that's that's where you shit out of me. I watch it. Like the right breaks through first, yeah. and the whole thing tilts like forty degrees. Yeah, and then it's just a boat. And then and then the wheels become a paddle boat. Yeah, you put it in second gear and fucking floor it. Can it not? Oh, you and I. It, can it not tip over because it's so buoyant? Because the cabin's like sealed there and it. It, I mean, it could, but it would be Yeah, it hard. could it could tip over to the side, but it won't, like, unless it actually gets somehow caught on the ice ledge, it won't stay tipped over. Like, its default is upright. Okay. The the, the tires are not what makes it float. Oh. The hull floats. Oh, it yeah. floats. It's it doesn't float hull. because of the tires. I thought the tires helped. Okay, no, no, yeah. you could have the t- I mean, I'm sure they help, but, like. That's not the primary. If they're all flat, you still float. I yeah, drove yeah, yeah. a couple of those amphi cars, uh, amphibious cars <laughs> that the Lane Motor Museum yeah, yeah, has, yeah. and then somehow like one of them, this past winter or something like that, one of them, something something went wrong with one of them and it sank, and they uh, on the local news someone sent me footage. It's like this B roll of me oh. driving it from like two three years ago or something like. Oh no! And it sank. Yeah, yeah, oh, but I, it wasn't. They, it wasn't when I was driving. You think it. they, they just, recovered it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. My story about the Sherp is going to be in Road and Track. Puppy Knuckles shot it. Dave Burnett. Oh, yeah. He's great. And the photos are incredible. Really cool. He it's, shot the Michael Fassbender Ferrari oh, story for us for VF. Yeah. yeah. Th- this thing is possibly the most photogenic thing I've ever been around. It's crazy. It has a face, like a fun face. Yeah. And it, it looks, makes it looks sprays well, it water looks like and happy mud and tough, everywhere. Right, yeah. Oh, the best. We drove over fucking cars. Yeah. You could drive over a three foot wall. Like, not drive like a Hummer could drive up and yeah. onto a shelf. This can drive over a three foot jersey barrier and just down and keep just going. Keep going. A vertical three foot thing up, over, down. Going. I love it. I yeah, love yeah. it. That so is cool. Crazy. It's the dopest shit. I had the best like eight hours. Ever we went through this, we went through everything we drove on. No other vehicle would possibly make it. Like a tank would do, wow. like some of it, but, not, but like not all of it. Not the ice. I did not the water <laughs> shit. No yeah. fucking way. Not. And that my little video of us going in the water there is really tame. Dave wanted him to hit the water harder and make a big splash, so he w- did another one. Where he was like, "Don't fucking video. Hold on to this one." He did another one where he hit the water in third gear on the power, and the water came like more than half way up the windshield and like we dove in so steep that i stood on the dashboard for like two seconds and then like sat back down it he hit it really hard this guy wow. josh knows what he's doing he does okay because you know i i'm usually more risky than you are but right now i'm like that makes me nervous no, like, I, no, I, I knew what's he, your protocol you know i knew he knew what he was doing okay. this that guy made, is me, that made me poo a little bit just watching yeah, it no yeah. this guy's a pro but like <laughs> You know, it was it's it's super super awesome. That's that rad. wasn't the first water we did. Like we did water on his property first. Like he has a big um probably like I don't know, forty or fifty foot diameter water hole that's like twenty feet deep on his property. Wow. So like we dove like yeah, this this video is right next to it. Like we just dove in and like played around in the water hole like there first. So like I knew that it would be fine. You get used to Okay. Yeah, cool. like yeah. I yeah, the first time we did it I was like, "Uh, ah, but like when he went in the ice lake cuz you break through, you're like, "Okay, this is fucking shady." That's amazing. Oh yeah, here's really us incredible. this is us driving over two cars. Just super cash. Just da, 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 up and right. over up and over cars. <laughs> is super the, cash. Is the only suspension uh the tires? Being yeah, there's no side. suspension. Right. The only suspension is the tires. Wow. Yeah. 
and it has the coolest central tire inflation system ever. It diverts the exhaust from the diesel engine into the tires. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so you can flatten the tires in 30 seconds, and you can fill them full in 30 seconds. Oh, that's very smart. It's um, genius. Does it have any of the problems like you were talking about the Hummer had, the H1 with the... None. Oh, cool. It has none problems. Why did they build this? <laughs> Who huh? built it and why? So the there's beginning? a... Con- I I, uh, I don't want to talk. spend too much time on it because I don't want to annoy the road and track people because okay. the yeah. story hasn't published yet. But, but it was built to... Um, there's some kind of prize in Russia mm-hmm. for getting some fucking wear. Right. It's like the X prize. Can yeah. you go like a thousand miles on one gallon yeah, of gas? Yeah, it's like an off-road <laughs> X prize, and it was basically designed for that. Rad. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and uh, and when I found out uh, through this dude, Evan, who hit me up on Instagram, and he was like, you remember that crazy video of that fucking Russian thing? And I was like, yeah, that's the shit. And he was like, my uncle's the distributor for those in North America right now. Like, would you like to come to Bemidji, Minnesota, which is four hours north of Minneapolis? Yeah. And uh, we have a 500 acre test track. Just come on out. And, and who, I was like, who yes. is buying this thing? Like a lot people, of people, people are, like, for hunting or something like that. Yeah, for hunting, like, like you know, o- overlanding and stuff yeah. is is big right now. And like, can you explain to me what that is? It's c- car camping, but in the okay. middle of nowhere. Okay, right. That's, I don't that's, they call it that. It's like it's just like you're sleeping in your car. That's what that's called. Yeah, it's car camping, but in, but in, in remote areas, basically. <laughs> okay. Super I mean, accurate. Isn't that what camping Super is accurate. for? Right? Right. You're supposed to be in remote so, areas. Yeah. So there's de- there's people who buy them recreationally for sure for like hunting or, or ex- expeditioning or whatever, but also um, like search and rescue uh, uh, for sure. anything winter because you could drive through like an eight foot snow it's drift. Like a snow cat. Yeah. Right. I mean. I mean, you can drive Over. yeah right. and one thing that's not in my story but i will tell you because it's very funny is that he said they just opened a distributor in mexico city and they said whatever your politics are we're not let's not talk about what your politics are but the fact that you can basically drive from mexico city to oklahoma city without pavement is something that <laughs> could be a concern or a gas station or, or without pavement a gas station and, and where a river isn't a barrier what's the top right. speed 30 all right so uh, a helicopter I, would certainly catch up oh yeah no a helicopter would, would catch you yeah. but yeah. like you could definitely take 10 people from the middle of mexico into the middle of america without stopping or <laughs> or being stopped by fucking what? anything how much does this thing wow. cost like 120, 300 grand. 120 oh 120 grand. i laughed i when he, when he told me i said you are not charging enough money my friend yeah, this no. needs to be twice as expensive yeah. yeah 250 yeah 250 all day um i did drive a tank once how was it well fun? i drove four tanks actually in minnesota was it at drive a tank was it drive a tank dot com yeah <laughs> I went there too. did you go there did yeah. you crush a car with I a did. tank yeah. yeah so we've all done this yeah this Sherping, yeah, much more fun than no, tanking. Seems, yeah, no, the tank yeah. was kind of awful. Kind of, yeah. The the little their little the, obstacle course yeah. was sort of fun, no, but the fun. crushing of a car was dumb. Yeah, you didn't feel it at all. <laughs> well, it's dumb because that yeah. thing probably weighs you know tens of tons. Yeah, and it's just all exactly. You're just, just like I was like, did we drive over it? Yeah. Did it happen already? Yeah. No, the Sherp I drove through an icy swamp, and yeah. it was incredible. That's amazing. And we also fucking I got a video. I'll put it on Instagram later. Um, we just drove through so many trees. <laughs> like, like uh, up to a four inch tree, it just goes it just over. goes right down. So like, is they, it armored or like? No, it's not. It's a it's a the, the hull is a steel on the bottom and aluminum on top, so it's oh, strong. Yeah, and there's sort of a there's a structure a, a, around it, kind of, and yeah. the inside, but um, it's not armored. Yeah. yeah, it's not a military thing. Yeah, it's that's the greatest. We did a story. <laughs> Everything did a story. about it is great. A story once for Bloomberg where we were t- we were. Writing, I was writing about all the like armored high level cars, you know, like an armored S class or E class armored BMW. And, uh, you know, they had some imagery, right? Some standard imagery that they could provide where they show like ballistic tests, you know, yeah. they show like them blowing up, you know, like essentially d- dynamite or whatever, you know, like a bomb underneath yeah. the car and all this. And my, uh, the photo editor was like, these are good, but do you think we could get them to like actually blow up a car for the story? And I was like, no. Like they're not gonna fucking blow up a car like for, for us to take pictures of for no reason. You should be like, you ask. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can put the you funny in touch thing, with them. The funny thing about an armored car is you kind of have to take their word for it. Right. That's a Rob <laughs> Ferretti joke. Like, what yeah. are you gonna do? Call them out on it? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, I'll buy it if I can shoot right, it. I can shoot it first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those things are actually kind of amazing. Yeah. They are. The doors that are like this yeah, thick. The glass that's like is 
They it's, they do well own. nowadays. They do a lot of promotion on Facebook video and YouTube video. And I was watching one of just showing the new materials that they line doors with that weigh like you know yeah. as much as like four pieces of cardboard. Right, but it can stop an AR-15 and it barely deforms. And like the windows are built for nine millimeter, but take yeah. AR rounds. And yeah, like it's really impressive material science. No, it's, it really it's amazing. It really is. Yeah, when I read the specs, like I think actually the fact checker didn't believe me on that one. They're like, <laughs> no way this can take like a hundred rounds from a machine gun or whatever, and like nothing happens to the windows. What uh, what is that you can recall your most <laughs> extraordinary uh, over the top press launch experience story? Okay, that you can recall. Is it maybe a Tenerife? Yeah. Is it South Africa? Uh, where, no. where did you go? What there's, did you do? Oftentimes when there's there those things come in and it's so because it's just me like running running this show of mine, you know, I can be picky and like yeah. sometimes it's like, you know what, I don't really like those press people. Like they're annoying to me. So uh-huh. I won't go on some of those kinds of launches. Um one of the best ones I think that I went on was uh I think it was it was Rapid S and maybe uh, DB DBS maybe yeah something like that. Yeah. Um, and we went to Scotland and we stayed in a castle on Loch Ness. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. And it was like yeah, you know it was like the awesome. summer and like oftentimes the weather is not great, but we happened to have like perfect weather. The roads were just incredible, like all through the whole like northern part of Scotland. Um, and there was no one like there was no no people let alone police you know yeah. what i mean so just it was a just sheep like once in a while yeah maybe. exactly and like it was just it's just exquisite like the whole thing was just perfect and like the food was great the people that were along on the trip were great the castle was obviously great that's a good one the lake was great we went out onto like a boat you know like searching for nessie or something <laughs> like that you know or like a sonar or something like that Guys, we gotta get some stick in there right yeah <laughs> so that one was probably I, one. I like to think of that one as like one of the top ones although we did have a really i did have a really good one this past summer driving the new G G wagon. Oh yeah, how is like, it? Did oh, you like it? Yeah, it was great. Are you a fan of the old G wagon? I mean, I loved the way that the old one looked. Yeah. But I drove it to Death Valley a couple of years ago and I had to go to like a chiropractor for like <laughs> two years <laughs> after that. I mean it was just terrible. And like yeah. you just feel like you're gonna you know you're gonna tip over yeah. and die at any time. You're driving you drive one over the grapevine in high winds. <laughs> like, yeah. Whoa he, Yeah. I mean there's it's it's windy in Death Valley in some places on the way there. It's like terrifying. Anyway this one's much better but we drove it from the south of france to like over the pyrenees to barcelona so oh, cool. okay. that one was pretty yeah. good like off-roading over the mountains and there stuff, was some just... off-road sex sec- sections uh but no we did not drive it just like over the mountains off-road oh, we drove yeah, it on, it's on actually wagons good you know. yeah yes yes i yeah. think it's very good so I'm starting to see them in la the the, the trucks are being offloaded yeah. The Armenians get them first. <laughs> it's all matte black in Beverly Hills everywhere. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I like I like that. I like that vehicle. Um I mean it it was by the end of its life sort of like a resto mod you know what I mean it's like yeah. here's like an old like a brand new old it's car. It's a touring shit. version of yeah. itself. It's a great <laughs> yeah. point. Yeah. That, that you know, there's a few vehicles have, that are right. like that. You know, the, all uh, Harley Davidsons. <laughs> right. Yeah. I guess I've never driven a Harley Davidson. Yeah. Another thing, I don't drive. In a way, I dislike right. the G wagon less now than I did because it didn't drive great. But it's like, well, it, you know, John Ward like can do his magic on something from the '60s, and it, yeah. it drives way yeah, better it than it did. Like an icon, but yeah. it drives <laughs> like an icon. Yeah. It just happens to be brand new. Right. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So that's I, that's how I thought of that. And there's yeah, there's a few cars that like have developed that. Quality. I mean, before this recent spate of Aston Martins, pretty much every yeah. Aston Martin was kind of like that, right? Yeah. Like this is like a 14 year old car. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I have an old Vanquish, like an 03. Yeah. We put a stick in, we sent it back to England. Yeah. And having driven all the new ones, I'm like, man, I really like that 03. Right. That 03 <laughs> with the stick is hot. Like, yeah. No, I mean, we, you know, we, we, love cars not in a rational way right yeah. like this is not it's not about like oh this one's faster or it's more luxurious or whatever yeah, it's aston's like, getting better is yeah. worse right they need to be worse <laughs> like <laughs> you know what i mean like, yeah there is a way in which i can see that where it's like yeah you lose the uh, I, I think i would describe them some some somewhere maybe more than once as like delightfully anachronistic you know yeah. it's just like this is something that's just you know it's it's not intentional that like they didn't make a new body or engine for 14 years they just didn't have any money to do it but <laughs> but it's a good thing they, they made of, the ones pretty that they did yeah because they can yeah they, can yeah, get away they with sort it. of ran with it and it was fine and this you know 
people, I think oftentimes people get stuck in this idea of like comparing cars and they're like, well, for $230,000, you could get this. And it's like, this is not how people make decisions, yeah. especially people that are buying cars at this no. level. They they're go, not, I love the shape of the steering yeah. wheel. I'll take one. Yeah, exactly. You know, or like, yeah. something I, equally I, it, stupid. It, yeah, it imprints on me. Or like, I, I love I love its overall shape. Or yeah. I, I love the way the leather smells. Or, you know what I mean? Like, these, we're not, they're not looking down the list of like, oh, this one's got, you know, a 1500 you know watt sound system and this yeah, one's cross like shopping yeah. doesn't really people some people cross shop yes. but like it, it, what you end up settling on isn't always the one be, that has the best specs you yeah. go you cross shop to get a get a range going and then you actually have to like sit in it and like yeah. imagine yourself go you know and if you can drive it and you know and yeah i was with some guy once on a launch and he was talking about i can't remember it was tight, like the 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 Cinquecento Abart and the and he was like, yeah, for the money you would pay for that car, that f- shitty little Fiat, you could get a Mustang GT. Like, why wouldn't someone just buy a Mustang GT? And I was like, literally, no one is cross shopping those two vehicles. A lot of messages from folks who mean well and are really looking for advice, but they they go, I'm looking at these three or four cars, and they have nothing to do with each other. Yeah, and I go, dude. If you want to ask me if if I like the the M3 or the ATSV right. better at this task, like all right, but yeah. like give me like give me like an objective reality to work from here. Right. Don't ask me if you should get an Audi S4 or a Ford F150. Right. Like, what the <laughs> fuck am I, I think it's because this? they want all of them, yeah. right? And they, yeah. they ask which one they should yeah, get. And that's just the get a yeah, get an E63 wagon, <laughs> right? And you have all of <laughs> then them. Then you right? have all of them. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I always say. People, really I mean, everyone good. asks like, what's your favorite car? Or, you know, I'm always like, for what? You know, yeah. like, where am I driving it? When? You yeah. know, who would I have to bring along with me? But a car like that, or like an RS7, like all around her, like, yeah. does sort of takes do a lot everything. of things. Yeah, very, very true. Yeah. So those are those are those are cars that I'm drawn to. It's my utilitarian side. I, I like I like some practicality. I'm gonna yeah. have to buy a four seat. I have three two seat cars right now <laughs> and i'm gonna have to do something about that yeah um, you need you need room for other people sometimes I, well i i don't i'm fine right <laughs> no, you don't but, right, but yeah. my fiance, right, we're in la right uh hannah just returned uh today returned her lease my fiance had a volvo uh v60 r design with oh, the yeah. Polestar star tune in that nice. awesome red yeah yeah it was great actually and uh we managed to go a full 39 months having never put a license plate on it Wow. We went open to close, no plates. Wow! Uh, so we feel very proud of ourselves having accomplished that. Is that a is that a mark of something here in California? Yeah. If you drive, you're like, driving invisibly. Yeah. And we just start <laughs> doing paper plates, though. Yeah. No, it's no. You can't do it anymore. Yeah. The game. The game has ended, and we won. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well done. High five. Game is like one of the weird, one of the few things you can get get away with in. Uh, in California, okay, yeah. just driving without, and a and then plate. you know if, if yeah, you have an HOV lane, but you don't have a thing, you know, or whatever fast pass, you could do that. Oh, then you can't be billed or yeah, something like right. that. The system of temporary registrations for new cars in yeah. California was completely idiotic. Oh, okay, for, so you could for do a it very forever. long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so anybody with forever. a nice car or a car that looked new would just clean, not right? put. Yeah, and we and we it, time and time again. Okay. Done. But they just, starting uh, March 1 of this year, now have a full-size, uh, a license plate-sized paper plate temp tag with a visible date on it. Ah, and so now- You can't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah there's no- So wait, what's she going to get instead? I don't know. That's the thing. Oh. We gotta, it has to have four doors. Okay. It has to be an automatic transmission. F-150. Okay. Besides, right. it has maybe to be yeah, 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 maybe an RS4. <laughs> right. RS4. <laughs> I was hanging out with the Mac here guys today. They had a, a new RDX there. I'm going to grab as a press car. It actually looks pretty nice. I was kind of okay. excited about that. I don't the, know. She the, likes square cars. The infotainment thing on that is, know, as, is really awful. I know. It's not great. Like, torturous. <laughs> Sorry, Acura. I mean, I, it was bad in the NSX, too. Yeah. But she likes boxy cars, and there's not mm-hmm. a lot of options left yeah. for someone who yeah, likes this, a boxy car. Yeah, the Scion XB is, is gone now. Right? She, had a, she had a GLK, which was boxy, okay, yeah. and she really liked that. That's the new RDX I looked at. Yeah. It's not a great looking car. The interior was pretty nice, though. Yeah. I have to say, I thought the interior, the seats and stuff and materials were really nice. But a Grand Cherokee, that's kind of boxy. Those are, I think Grand they're really Cherokey, good looking. It's a little big. It is big. It's a little big. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I'm trying to. I'm still trying to kick her into something a, a little older, maybe. Mm-hmm. But she hates G wagons. G wagons yeah. are out. She. We both hate Wranglers. Yeah. Those are out. It's not a lot. Not a lot of not boxy a lot of boxiness. Car. Ford yeah. Flex. Boxiness. Ford Flex. 
Uh, they, they don't make the Ford no, Flex use, anymore, do use. they? Oh, no. you They yeah. don't. And uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll sort it out. After this show, a zillion people will tweet me options, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. They'll think of everything. They will. Yeah. It's they always okay. do. I am i don't want to interfere. In, I didn't interfere when she got the Volvo, and I don't want to interfere. I want to let her get anything. I don't. Yeah. I, I want no responsibility. That you makes buy sense. Buy whatever Correct. the fuck you want. Yeah. The new V60 is actually really nice. It's dope. It's, it's very good. Really nice. nice. Yeah, it's a very handsome car. Get I think there's a, there's a lot of cash on the hood right now and leftover volts. Leftover volts oh, yeah. are, and I'm a huge, I'm a volt evangelist. Yeah, I like the volt. I've put I, a bunch of people in volts. This is so this so is one good. of the great advantages of being the one person in an entire coterie that knows anything about cars. It's like every single friend of mine comes to me for car advice, and unlike most people, they actually take my advice because they literally they? have no preconceptions. They have no what's that like? No knowledge. It's kind of fun. It's like being you, the you puppet have a master, power. right? Yeah. You're the yeah. and but it's fun. You know, it's like fun t- to match people up. You know, match people up with cars, and I, I actually, I actually made a little questionnaire because people ask me that often. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a and good the idea. first I should make a questionnaire. Yeah. So it's like, you know, are there any brands you like or hate? Is there anything? Is there a body style you're looking for? Because sometimes people just have no idea. They're like, I need a car. Um, and then what activities do yeah, you do? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. What are you going to be using it for? Rank these things in order of importance. You know, oh, like I performance totally need company. a questionnaire. Yeah, this totally is useful. so obvious. And so and then one of the questions for a long time was like, what is your gut response to Volkswagen Jetta wagon, which was like, you know, just like <laughs> the perfect car for everyone in New York City that needed a car. That's funny. So, uh, and for a while I may have said diesel, but that, now do that people, went if the people way. follow your advice and they buy the car you advised years later, if they have any issue, do they take it out on me? The villain, like, you, you know, told me to get the yeah, Land Rover. Right, yeah. I bought the thing, and now 2019, right. it's breaking yeah. down. You know. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't come up against that recently because most of the time people are are either buying and they're going to keep it forever and they don't people don't drive that much in New York you know yeah. or they're <laughs> leasing and you know it's going to be gone in 3 gotcha. years when i was 8 my mom let me pick her car cuz oh, i knew nice. a lot about cars yeah. for an 8 year old and my mom actually let me pick her car and i got a, it was a 1988 mm-hmm. volvo uh 740 mm. i wanted the turbo she didn't want to pay for it so yeah. she ended up with the GLE okay uh in silver and it turned out to be a it got lemon, lemon lot. It actually got lemon it was lot. A, it was a sh- it was a shit pile. And she anything for the whole rest of her life to, yeah, from then until wow. now. Right. You're, uh, whatever you I never say take your is advice. great. She <laughs> gets right, the something else. God, that's thing. funny. Yeah. She won't what? listen to me at all. My parents never had interesting cars. Actually, I wrote something about this, like a Father's Day story once for VF about my dad's cars. And I was like, everything was totally like quotidian, just like these boring, you know, American. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was the 70s and 80s in Detroit. Like, you had to buy yeah. a Cutlass Sierra or whatever. I mean, you just like that the was Delta like, 88 yeah. or yeah, I mean, Bonneville. It wasn't even, wasn't even yeah, that Delta nice. Like, yeah. it was worse than that. Um, but uh, he got he got, he got a little bit hurt by that by that that he never had any interesting cars. But my mom, I did a story about her cars and her. If you like, it was like charting out her life via the cars that she had purchased, and she has a sort of an interesting life, but which we won't go into. But. Um, Mainly, it was sort of as if someone was operating from like a checklist of like every kind of vehicle yeah. that was completely unrelated, like the cars that you were mentioning before. And it was just like, how did you go from, <laughs> you know, like a Mercury Grand Marquis to a Toyota Supra? <laughs> and then how did you go from that to like, you know, like a Chrysler LHS? And then how did you go from that to like a Jeep and a Crossfire? That's and then so, how did you yeah. go from that, you know, just like these crazy, yeah, crazy, crazy jumps. streams of cars? Yeah, yeah, it didn't make any sense. But if my you parents at, have, my parents have kept the same, the same kind of cars the whole time. Yeah, their whole yeah. life. Once my mom learned what a crossover was, right? That was fucking done, game right? over. Yeah. yeah, she was, she was crossing. My, my mom accidentally fell into glory. She was like, she had a '66 Mustang, mm. and then she sold, sold that for like a VW Bug because '60s. And right. I remember when I heard that, I was like, "Why?" Because I imagined you know GT350, <laughs> right. which it wasn't. She so. had like a six-cylender, six cylinder. oh yeah, for sure, wheels, yeah. like garbage. And then, yeah. But then she had an MG after that, and then uh, Volvo somewhere it's something in the middle, and then Volvo Turbo Wagon, and now it's just Priuses all day. But it oh, was like yeah. the first three to four yeah. were like it's amazing good, things yeah. that she probably didn't even know were great. She's like, "These are fun," or "These," you know. Yeah, no, I feel like yeah, people happen into cars in weird kinds of ways, you know. Like, 
someone's aunt especially had from one 62 to 72 there's a yeah. lot of things yeah. that happen you know what do. now that i think about it my dad tried to be into cars yeah. and failed at it right in the 80s so yeah. my dad in high school he had a beetle okay. like him and his brothers shared a beetle all three of them it, him and his two brothers how tall are they because my dad tall. is six five okay his two brothers are both six three oh. and they shared a beetle wow then he had a that shows you how <laughs> comfortable is a car is yeah. and how very designed it in yes. all positions for yes. tall very tall oh, in yeah. shape wide people <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, then oh, he had a okay. 72 GTO. Okay. And then he had one of those cool Cougars when the Cougar was still cool. Oh, yeah. And then he got a Jag XJS oh, in 83. Yeah. And that killed him, right? And that, he had it he for like, like a year. I don't want any other car nope. ever again and after he that. fucking tapped out, and it was boring boring stuff after yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Those cars... I love those Jags. Dude, you know, is there ever a better car to just fucking throw an LS in a six-speed automatic <laughs> than a Jag XJS, right? I Quiet had a, exhaust, keep it nice. I had a, I had when I was doing that vintage car yeah, rental look story. Look at that. I mean, look at that. Yeah. In British I had, racing I had, green. I had a white one uh, with the white white basket weave wheels mm. uh, that I got from one of the car rental apps or whatever, and I had it here around the LA Auto Show, and it was a dream. Yeah. With the V12. It was just a dream to drive. Like, the the... The suspension on that car, you're just like... <laughs> yeah, I drove it with Tony, actually, and he's in the story. He's not named, but he's in the story. He was like, if I had this car, I might leave the house. <laughs> you know, like, I could drive places in, in Los Angeles. Almost, Tim, you see that ugly blue you're hovering on? That's yeah. the color my dad had, this terrible blue. Oh. It's it's by far the worst color for this yeah. car. And the worst this angle. Is, this is on yeah. my this is on my, on my my list of the, the I call the holy trinity of 80s GTs, right? So mm-hmm. I, we have the 928 already, but yeah. I want like a 560 SEC mm-hmm. and an XJS. Mm-hmm. Someone and, just brought one to Cars and Coffee that had... It was ridiculously clean. It was on mono blocks, a 560 oh, yeah. SEC, and I was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. I can get down on this." Yeah, no, those are yeah. great. But I did a story about those for Bloomberg, I think. And Bloomberg is the one place where, like, if I ever write a story about like an up and coming collectible, if you look at the Haggerty Price Guide, like that day, it's just like, Boop. <laughs> really, wow, yeah. they're paying attention. It's like all those, yeah, those. Uh, Bro, make your own market. Yeah, they're they like I know, it. well. <laughs> I like it. I have written pretty much about every single one of my cars more than once. You There's know? a 2002 mm-hmm. blue M3. Here's here's a tenor. <laughs> right, yeah. Just do a story about that. Keep would. it fair. Keep it fair. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Buy something nice for yourself. Maybe, right. write, maybe write a story. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, uh, oh yeah, the oh, five, yeah, six, the five yeah, six, the SEC. SEC. Those are so badass. Yeah, yeah. they are badass. Well, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm building my spot, and you wrote about it. Thank you for. Oh yeah, that was fun. Who did you write about it for? Bloomberg. Uh, no, Haggerty. 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 Um, Sorry, Hannah wrote about it from Bloomberg. But, um, you know, I'm thinking about doing airport pickup for my people because we're close to the airport. So yeah. I imagine if, you have, if you're a good customer, you come in and blah, blah, blah. So you need a cool airport airport shuttle. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm thinking about these, you know, with Thaddeus in Dubai with these SEL 1000s. Have you seen those? No. Tim, can you Google a Mercedes SEL 1000? It was basically a Maybach before there was a Maybach. Oh, it's like the, a six door like or something Middle like that? Middle East no? only. Mercedes limo. <laughs> Make sure you oh, get yeah. the in- the interiors. The interiors are sh- well. That one is yeah. That's just that's just that's an extended door, but Fish there's bowl. the crazy like interior like like super eighties CRT TVs, um, wow. like crazy bolstered uh, seats. Like look at that dashboard there. Like that is look at the stereo oh, on the wow. headliner. Wow, that wow. is the shit right there. That's like wow. a submarine command center. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah, you can exactly. Get, you can get these in Dubai. You just have to bring them home. Fortunately, Thaddeus's job is to do social media for Emirates Airlines, which is trying to promote the fact that they now ship cars globally. Oh, there we go. That's a good plan. We may yeah. have to do a little vacaciones and do bizzle, Zach. <laughs> I've never it. been. Bring I home a sick Benz. There, look at the back seat, Timmy. You get the ba- oh, oh, right with the TV. Who doesn't want to get picked up from the airport? <laughs> yeah, and that that is great. And you know right. what? That ride is long enough to have that experience and like it, but not too long. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Three You're miles. Like, I need to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, this is actually kind of old. <laughs> this is, this is terrible. Right? The AC doesn't clean. work. <laughs> right. I'm warm. I can't get any stations on this TV. I mean, it's either that or a Toyota Century. We'll see. Oh yeah, we'll I mean, see. yeah. How many people? You just, you just need to pick up one person one. at a time, right? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. I ain't no limo service. That's right. Yeah, a century, a century, <laughs> century makes sense. Those are good. affordable too. Yeah. Johnny's at like a launch for that right now. 
He was, uh, he was yeah, in he Japan, went, right? a special a special thing just for him and uh, and Phil, like the two century lovers. <laughs> you really <laughs> they had a little um, special yeah, time they had a special with time with the century. Japan. I think they went to the century factory or something they like did. that where these things are. Is, built. There, yeah. is, is there a new century? Yeah, they 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 launched it a a couple of years ago when I was in Japan, when it's I was in Tokyo. Century, it was twenty nineteen century. It was twenty. It was twenty seventeen. They launched it. It's actually brand new. It looks exactly. It looks the same. old. Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. exactly the same. Pretty much. Not oh, exactly. Exactly. But, but the interior. It looks um, sick. Quite though. nice. But oh, I, yeah, I did so a story. Great. I think I did a story for Bloomberg about that. Actually, it was like. That looks yeah. so nice. It's a it's a it's, it's a fucking, great car. That's some I don't like stately that grill that much. shit. It's right very there. stately. It's kind yeah. of roll. It's from the headlights back. It's like Rolls Royce ish. Everybody, <laughs> Jinx. I'm a fan. Uh, I liked riding in those in Japan. They were fucking cool as hell, man. That's yeah. a great car. It's a it's a smooth car. Yeah, and the the um yeah you I think the V12s are still not uh, federalizable no, yet. Can't. It's not 25 years yet or something, but mm -hmm. soon. I think 95. Yeah, something maybe like, so like that. Two or three more years. Yeah. yeah. I think it's I'm all about soon. Japanese imports. You can get some really clean, like you can get a Celsius, like a right-hand drive LS400, like the nicest one in the world, it's like eight grand. Yeah, Fucking great. Um, do you still have that? The LS, the million. Mile I gave. Car? I hit a million miles, and okay. then I, I passed it along. I gave okay. it to to Freddie Hernandez in Florida, who does YouTube videos like wrenching shit. Okay. And when he blows it up, which he will, yeah, uh, he has to make me an engine block coffee table for my new building. Okay. Which I'm excited for. There we go. That sounds I'm, like a good deal. Yeah. The best part is I didn't have to pay the commercial insurance policy anymore because that was wow. expensive. Why was it commercial insurance? Because I was lending it to people to put uh, miles on. Oh, got and, it. Yeah. You know, liability and such. Right. 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 Uh, a couple of questions from the fans. Oh. It's light today. Yeah. We got a lot of live questions, you know, sometimes more, sometimes less. Usually, if it's a good show, there's less, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah, because they're not trying to get us to talk about shit. If you're telling good <laughs> stories, they're not like, hey, talk about what car I should buy. Yeah, it's good. Miguel says, any car, any trim, any price, what car has the most blank switches? I think if you were to find switches. the most base 2010 era Panamera, uh huh. The most base one you could find, you'd probably have a lot yeah, of black a lot switches. of switches. Yeah, yeah. Poor because Porsche when they did that whole center yeah. center stack because they have so they have so many options <laughs> and and all the buttons are right on display there. That's yeah, true. some are like a lot of hidden down the left like Mercedes and Volkswagen. Yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of real estate there to <laughs> occupy. I think that's I think that's gonna be it. Yeah. Uh, goal. Uh, Godzilla says I need a new daily driver. Budget is twenty five to thirty thousand. I'm looking for something reliable, reasonably practical. Considering a newer GTI, an Alpha Julia, or a five series, presumably used. Uh, is there a better overall option than a GTI? Uh, would a five series reliability be prohibitive at that price point? Zach um, is nodding his head. I think at that the answer is is get a GTI and don't get a used five series. Yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't go with a five series. I mean, you could you could uh, get a Focus ST. Or Fiesta ST for sure. You could get uh, a used BMW 1 Series, maybe that could be cheaper than a 5 Series. A Julia? I don't know. I mean, no. I do love those Alphas. I, a friend of mine's driving one uh, this week. A, a press car like the the um, Stelvio Cardiphobia yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. And uh, I think actually Tony was the one who who was like it's like a tuner CX five. <laughs> it <laughs> actually is, yeah. yeah. In all the ways, but like I love I love the sound. I love the way those cars look. I love the way they stand out. I've not had an Alpha press car that where like the window switch didn't fall off or you know the check engine light didn't come on or the infotainment system didn't shit itself just, or whatever. Just just, just Google. I don't know, you know, alpha reliability for the new cars. Like, yeah. I've heard some bad... I, yeah. I bet check they, for yourself, but, like, yeah. it's not great. And no, Sam not wrote great. that story for Road and Track. Like, yeah. There's, there, the issues exist. So, yeah. so, so, I mean, if you're talking about, like, a used BMW will probably have some problems. And if you get a well-maintained one, and I think if you bought a car for, like, if you have thirty grand, don't spend thirty grand on the used BMW because then you're mm -hmm. out of money. Like spend twenty and yeah. then save some money, and you might get one that's really well maintained and has had all like the the preventive maintenance done, and you'd be fine. But I mean, if that's a little worrisome, then a Julia is like, ooh. yeah, yeah. And even a Julia with a warranty, it's like if you only have one car, you got to worry about downtime. Yeah, you know. Yeah, remember Lieberman? I think he was half joking. He was like, oh, they give you like a, a great borrow car while your car's in the shops. Like, how often do you want to do that? Really? Right. You know. Yeah. No, GTI. It's GTI is it's so good. is one yeah. of those answers. You know, it's the gold sort of like, standard yeah, for a got, reason. You've got twenty five thousand dollars. You want something fun? You can't go wrong. Really, yeah. it's a great car. Good Veloster car. N. 
The Veloster and yeah. I drove. I just drove that too yeah, recently. Veloster I was very was impressed. Really, really fun. Not yeah. as refined as the GTI, I don't no. think, but really fun. But if you want something a little more gnarly and ragged, yeah. it was very fun. I enjoyed that one too, and I don't. I want to make sure I remember to recommend that's, it and not just forget it. That's smart because yeah. I did forget about that as well. Yeah. But when I was driving it, I was like, "This is very impressive." Yeah, it was and a like, lot of fun. I don't know anything about cars, but especially Hyundai's. Like, I, that's like maybe the first time I'd been in one. Yeah, but you know, fun, <laughs> you know, fun when you yeah, get in. Yeah, but I know fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mateo said. I'm a college student who's really into cars. A loaded family friend reached out to me to find him a singer. What is the best way to find a car and not have people thinking I'm a dorm room broker? Hmm. Well, first of all, you could be a dorm room broker and make money doing it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I know I'm, I did a one take of a guy who's doing that. Good for yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, you can be a dorm room broker first. That that's yeah, that that's can an happen. acceptable answer, right? Um. Yeah, I mean, I presume he means used, and it doesn't mean calling up Singer and just placing an order, right? Uh, which I you don't could know. Do. Is, are there are those any of those cars available on the secondary market? I yet? don't see They've them. They've only made that like not They've that They've only many. made like seventy five of them, or yeah, something. if that many, right? And uh, I don't see them change hands a lot. No. I mean, uh, I, I might if I what I would probably do is I would start calling other brokers. Honestly, uh, I I would I'd like. Look for some real heavy hitter brokers. Uh, I, I think there's no easy way to get one of them cars. You just have to put the word out that you're interested, I guess. And if one comes up, maybe so they'll many, call you first. So but. many people are interested, and yeah. so many people are willing to pay so much money for them. Yeah, I mean, you've heard. or just get a different car. I mean, come on. <laughs> I would, I would say just don't get one. On yeah, it, but you know, put get on the list, and maybe you'll get one new. Yeah. Somewhere down the line, start I mean, calling I'm brokers. Sure make a year, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think, I don't think his his worry that he's that people won't take him seriously is the problem. I think the problem is that secondhand cars don't really exist, and yeah. if they do, they tend to trade hands quietly among small groups of people. I think that's probably true. Yeah, I think every person who owns a singer, yeah. has five friends that would be thrilled to buy it off him. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, I don't think I'm over generalizing there. I think it's probably pretty true yeah i mean those are that's a you've driven one right i've been in one i haven't okay. driven one it yeah. was lovely yeah it was lovely but it's like fun. you know at what yeah. what is the for, difference in two hundred thousand yeah, for four hundred for four hundred grand it, uh, it's still fucking be that nice you know what i mean yeah um, uh, it is that nice but yeah. yeah you make a good point yeah money has to not matter anymore um uh, Ethan says, I'm looking for a second car for the track. I'm considering E36 M3s. I want a coupe that's rear-wheel drive with a stick, possible to get 400 horsepower, and good-looking. A V8 would be cool. Uh, less on the initial purchase, the better. Budget is 15000 with mods. You're not getting a race car f- <laughs> with a 400 horsepower rear-wheel drive stick, I don't think, for 15000 unless you're building Mustang something. GT, it would be close, like a 2011. It'd be close yeah. to that. You have to get a shitty, a shitty. You know, it wouldn't look great, but like, yeah, a 2011 like, GT with mods would probably be close to that. Otherwise, he's talking about putting an LS engine in an E36, like That's 400 cool. horsepower out of that six cylinder. No, not without a turbo. Yep. And you don't want a turbo for the track. Nope. So what are you gonna do? C5 Corvette. Yeah, I mean, cor- yeah, Just buy a C5 Corvette. Yeah, I mean, probably. yeah, buy a. I, an, I would say buy a. Two generations back Mustang and call Maximum Motorsports to get some suspension or or buy a Corvette. A Corvette is probably where he wants to be. Can, yeah. I, can I make a confession? Uh, the, the, the late C3 Corvette is starting to look really good to me. <laughs> I think okay. they're good-looking cars. Yeah. They, they're cool, good-looking yeah. cars, depending on the bumpers and all those kinds yeah. of things. I like this. I don't mind. I like the soft nose. I like the bubble back. Like I think it, I think those cars look just like I don't like mind that. Whoosh, I just find the you know? engine offensive. They, whoosh. Yeah. That's a funny, but <laughs> apt, apt description. They look like that. what? Yeah. They look loosh. Oh, I thought yeah. you said they look like whoosh. Oh, like, fuck. Like, oh, that too, right? Slipstream. But no. I think cool. they I think they look good. Yeah. And like 210 or 220 horsepower in like a 79 or 80, you know? That's yeah. not that's not small. Well, if you get the early ones, they might have more, you know, you can probably do some like basic power mods and then it'd be a little more. I mean, yeah, yeah. depends on how much power you need. I feel like if how they're going to make the noise and they look like that, they should at least have be able to do a burnout. Okay. You know. But they don't need 350? Yeah. Four speed auto, like fine, great, fantastic vet all day. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to throw another one at Ethan here for a track car. A couple of years ago, I went to Fontana and drove an actual, like, IMSA Mustang that was, like, 10 years old. Like, okay. it was, like, a 2003 or four Cobra race car that that was, like, 
full cage, you know, like a, a, a car that was like it was built. I don't think it was Pratt and Miller, but it was built like a by like a Pratt and Miller type of company. And I think the dude paid 20 grand for it. You know what I mean? And like, that's a good point. Yeah. Like it was a Mustang. Like it has certain specific, you know, race spec parts like brake pads and, and whatnot. And obviously it has a cage and fire suppression, but like it's basically a Mustang. It's a real, like I might, I would like look on racing junk or something and buy someone's like already built race car. Good call. If you, you have know? a trailer, if, if you don't need to drive it to the track or yeah. if you live in a state where you can get away with that, that's a really good point. Yeah. I'd throw F body Camaros into that mix too. I know you may not like them, but they're fucking fast. They are. And they're, and they're cheap. <laughs> I don't like the way they look, but if they're set up right, who gives they're, a shit? They're aerodynamic. Super cheap. They can handle good and they go really fast. Yep. You know, so. Uh, Jordan says, oh, uh, thank you for the donation, Jordan. Damn. Uh, is my boy's restaurant in Philly open yet after the fire? Oh, yeah. Um, my friend Chris Young, his... Uh, his restaurant, the the Little Lion on Fourth uh, and Chestnut in Philly, burned down last year. I think it's opening in a couple months. It's not opened yet, but thank you for asking. And if anyone is in Philadelphia, go eat at the Little Lion. Mark it, mark it down to check it out and see when it reopens and help my boy out. He's a great, great chef. Zach says found a 2004 Lexus GS 430 with 48,000 miles, one owner, no crashes, clean Carfax. Dealer wants nine thousand. Should you buy? Yes, you should, Zach. You should definitely buy. <laughs> That's a great deal. And if you don't want to buy, send me that contact. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for a GS. I was looking for a two thousand one to two thousand five GS four thirty. Oh, they sold fifteen hundred of them in North America. Yeah, that whatever car fucking he found, I want that one. That's a better. <laughs> it's a better one than I found. I that found was it. in the. That was also in the list of my mother's car. She had one of those. Really? Not a four thirty. They're fast. Yeah. The four thirties are fast. Yeah. and I, the, I'm trying to find the low, like literally the lowest one, mile one I can find. The lowest I've gotten is sixty one, but I'm trying to hold out for a lower one. I was doing this series. I'm still doing it actually for automobile for the magazine called underappreciated mm. uh that's about just like weird oddball cars from the 90s and 2000s i i do these series all the time but uh so the first one we did was the infinity m45 the first the first, the first one, one. Yeah. hell yeah that's badass that, that shit car. was jdm as fuck yeah. dude that was like way too jdm yeah. for america yeah like we right. couldn't they, handle yeah. it yeah they sold like zero of them and then like <laughs> they changed it to like the jelly bean thing yeah the next fucking year, and they Vinny sold, like, russo talks about them things every day yeah. Every day he bought a my 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 housemate just bought a Q forty five T. Oh yeah. A ninety nine yeah. with like with the, sixty thousand miles on it right. and it's clean. Super with clean. like the with the, was that the one with the special suspension? Like yeah, it had like an adaptive, adaptive suspension, suspension and a limited yeah. slip diff. Yeah. yeah. Um but he talks about these M forty fives all the time. That is an They're unfortunate front. front end. But no, it's good. No, I think mm -hmm. it looks great. No, that car's good. I now it's understand okay. so where they got like, going, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's like a, actually it's like that a, grill carried over to the bulbous one. Yeah, <laughs> they, did, they didn't yeah. even change the and grill. And it carried yeah. over like the Murano and no, stuff. No, it's good. It's like it's like a it's Oof. like a '60s Virgil Exner design almost. Yeah, you know? it's, it's got a real really, concept got, car. Yeah, it's got a real like a uh, American muscle car. I remember liking how these drove too. Actually, <laughs> didn't they, they <laughs> drove <laughs> there? They drove it's good, terrible. right? Didn't they yeah. drive nice? Yeah. We got one on trade at the dealer I worked at, and I remember like we kept it to like use as like a runaround car, and it fucking mobbed. It was kind of nice. Yeah. All right. Well, that's like just about two hours. So I oh. think that's our show. Okay. What do you is want that, to plug? That's, that's okay. Is that's that how long it's supposed to be? Right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's usually we, we usually after two hours the YouTube stream gets a little shaky, so yeah. we try and call it before two hours. That yeah, sounds that, fine. We, to we me. don't want our stream to just die. No, we don't want the stream to get shaky. Was that, uh, was that every question? I just want to check. Was there another one? No. Someone just gave us some money. Uh, was right. Sweet. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to plug? Anything? Plug. Yeah. Promote. Um, where should they follow you? Sure. Yeah. People can follow me if they want. That's fine. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'm Where, not idiot? Where? Oh, uh, <laughs> on Instagram, the real Brett Burke. Um, on Twitter, I guess Brett underscore. You Burke. are far too successful. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. That thing. Right. I'm gonna go ride with DJ Khaled and right. have people follow yeah. me in person. <laughs> That's very. Funny. I'm not that good at social media. I have to be. Yeah, if you don't need to be, be honest, it doesn't matter. You know what? You don't. I wouldn't get better at it if I were you I would appreciate that you have made a, fa a career without it being a significant part of it yeah you're fucking lucky <laughs> no you really are you're lucky that you don't that that's not that using your social media specifically for your career in a yeah. big way is not an important thing okay it's, it is it's lucky I trust me because as someone who has to do it it sucks yeah <laughs> <laughs> why though it seems like everyone's always having so much fun out there 
maybe they are. I don't know. Some of them are. Right. For me, it's just a just a never ending down, another downhole. Right. <laughs> another task that it's is always a, well, undone. Especially like you know, if you take your job, if you're driving and researching and writing and all those things, and now you have to add another task to it, and how and you, I mean, start analyzing like the frequency with which you do that task, and it, so it's adding yeah. like it can. If someone's getting really huge, it can be like adding another job, and eventually it becomes their whole job. Wow. Like DJ Khaled, fucking live right. streaming while right. you're driving through crowds of cyclists yeah. and he's driving. driving. That's <laughs> I'm like, maybe one hand on the wheel. Right. DJ Khaled! We the best. We the best, fam. Thanks for coming in, Brett. Thanks for having Good me. Show. That was a lot of fun. Enjoy that Bentley. Oh, I'm going, to, I'm going mm. uh, out to uh, Malibu this weekend. Are you? Yeah, renting a place with a friend who's coming in from New York. Nice. Yeah. Well, I will be, if you'd like to come have lunch, I will be at uh, Bill's, a.k.a. Malibu Kitchen, okay. with the chaps from Lotus, oh. who are bringing out a pair of Avora 410s for okay. us to have a go with. We're going to have some sandwiches okay. Sunday at 11 at Bill's. Sunday at 11? Yeah. All come right. hang out. We'd Good love, to know. We'd love to, to see that Bentley in action. Yes. Uh, Brett Thanks. Burke, ladies and gentlemen, on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Uh, we are powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally something to say. Uh, <laughs> Thursday, tomorrow, tomorrow is tomorrow, Wednesday, Wednesday, 4 45 p.m. We got Vaughn Gittin Jr., Formula Drift Woo! driver. Uh, ultimate fun haver and whatnot. I saw him at the track today. He's excited. Uh, we're going to have Vaughn Gittin Jr. live in studio. He's here competing in Formula Drift. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Otherwise, peace the fuck out, homies. We out. <laughs>